Hello and welcome guys. Make yourselves comfortable and enjoy. Don't forget to go and support the original author. He put a lot of effort into this. Well, let's continue now. This is Necromancer of the Shadows. Chapter 376. When a person reaches above S rank, his mana evolves into the World Essence. The World Essence is the higher form of energy and is much more powerful than the mana. But by using concepts, people can increase the power of world essence even more. For example, if a person is proficient with space element, he can use his understanding of space element to turn world essence into conceptual energy of space. Conceptual energies are the evolved version of world essence, and not every person can turn world essence into conceptual energy. Being at the disaster level, it is obvious that both Volta and Malfasa had their own conceptual energies. Volta had a vague understanding of many different kinds of conceptual energies. But the main concept that he used in his world essence is the concept of destruction, making it the conceptual energy of destruction. Meanwhile, Malfasa used the concept of despair, making his world essence the conceptual energy of despair. All conceptual energies have their own strengths and weaknesses. The conceptual energy of despair is very powerful if used, along with a skill that can affect the target's mind or soul. But it is not good when you used it for a physical attack. So when Malfasa clashed against Volta, the dark energy covering his body was immediately destroyed by the conceptual energy of destruction. Crack exclamation point. The sound of bone cracking rang out. The flames of destruction engulfed Malfasa's body. And he was shot towards the ground like a fiery meteorite. His body covered the distance to the ground in an instant and... Boom dash. With a deafening roar, Malfaces' body struck the ground, unleashing an unimaginable explosion that reverberated for thousands of kilometers. A shockwave of unfathomable power swept outward, obliterating everything in its path. The force of the collision tore open the ground, creating a crater of immense proportions that spanned more than 100 kilometers in diameter, and its depth seemed to reach into the very core of the dimension. But Volta wasn't done yet. He looked at the fiery chimera that was floating in the sky. Raw exclamation point. The chimera roared and opened its mouth. Balls of molten lava started to form in its mouth. And it shot them inside the giant crater. Boom dash. Boom dash. The balls of molten lava exploded inside the crater, turning the crater into a pond which was filled with lava. Volta looked at the pond of lava with a grin on his face. He is not dead, right? Rumble exclamation point. Just as he spoke, the entire dimension started to shake. The grin on Volta's face become even wider, and he reinforced the dimension using his silver flames. Suddenly the lava inside the crater surged outward, and a giant black monster that was 500 meters tall came out of it. The monster was looking like a black slime, and there were hundreds of mouths on its body. I think you should take a look at. Malfasa was standing at the top of the monster, his right hand was limp, his body was filled with burn marks, and blood was coming out from his beak. His red eyes were now completely black, and he was glaring at Volta with hatred. Wow, this monster is even more bad looking than you, Volta said in a surprised voice when he saw the strange looking monster. But I don't think it will be able to help you escape from here, he said and was ready to burn the monster when hundreds of mouths on its body opened. Airy. The hundreds of mouths on its body released a strange sound. When Volta heard that sound, his soul shook and his mind went into a frenzy. The memories he never wanted to recall suddenly appeared in his mind, and he lost focus for a moment. Malfasa did not miss this chance, just as Volta lost focus. He flapped his crow-like wings, and instantly appeared before Volta. It is my turn, bastard. Malfasa roared and punched the round face of Volta with his full strength. Boom dash. Shockwave speared in all directions, Volta's face was caved in, and he was shot hundreds of kilometers backwards. Because of the impact, Volta's mind recovered, but before he could stabilize himself, the slime-like monster opened its mouths again. Aree. Even though Volta tried to resist the spiritual attack of the monster, he still lost focus for a brief moment. Malfasa did not miss the chance again. He appeared before Volta with a small black energy black in his hand and pressed it on his face. Boom dash. The energy ball exploded upon coming in contact with Volta's face. He was shot downwards like a broken kite and smashed to the ground, creating a crater even larger than Malfasa. Malfasa thought that Volta would be dazed because of his energy ball attack, and decided to continue his attack. His sharp claws gleamed with dark energy, 
and he appeared above Volta who was trying to stand up. Whoosh! Exclamation point. Malfasa slashed with his sharp claw wanting to rip apart Volta's body. But unknown to him, Volta can't feel pain. So he wasn't dazed at all. Just as the claw was about to struck him, he grabbed it with his hand, the purple flames in his eyes burned even more brightly, and he twisted the claw of Malfasa, breaking it as well, just like his right hand. Ugh! Malfasa cried out in pain, and tried to escape from Volta's grip. The black slime monster saw Malfasa's situation, and was about to use another spiritual attack, when suddenly the temperature around it increased. Raw exclamation point. Before it could understand what was happening, the giant fiery chimera whose body was glowing, appeared above its head. Boom dash. The fiery chimera exploded above the monster's head, a wave of fire engulfed hundreds of kilometers of the area, and the slime monster disappeared from the world, even before it could make a sound. How dare you make me remember those dark memories? Volta roared as the cracks on his body expanded even more. Should I help him? Upon seeing Malfasa's situation, muttered a dark figure who had been watching the battle from the beginning, hiding inside the void. Chapter 377 That man is really something else. The dark figure hiding in the void said, even after doing such an insane thing, he was still able to preserve his shadow undeads. I thought it would be very easy to deal with him when he will come back. The dark figure looked at Volta who was holding Malfasa. But if his other shadow undeads are also safe just like him, then it will not be easy. The dark figure pointed one of its fingers towards Volta. Well, not that it would change anything. The dark figure said and shot an invisible beam of energy toward Volta. Volta was fuming with anger because of the dark memories he had recalled after spiritual attacks of the Black Slime. Malfasa used the conceptual energy of despair to summon that monster, which is why Volta remembered those dark memories, after being hit by its spiritual attacks. Because of his anger, the temperature around Volta rose to an unimaginable degree. When he could not free his claws from Volta's grip, Malfasa made an expression of panic. He could feel that his claw was melting due to the high temperature. Just when Malfasa thought he is done for, he noticed the temperature around him begin to drop, and Volta's grip on his claws loosened. No one noticed. But this was the moment when the invisible beam that the dark figure shot struck Volta. Malfasa was taken aback when Volta loosened his grip, but he didn't waste any time, and immediately pulled back his claw. While pulling back his claw, he looked at Volta, and saw that he was just standing there with a dazed look on his round face. Even though he was confused about Volta's situation, Malfasa did not miss such a good opportunity. He jumped up and both of his claw-like feet gleamed with dark energy. Using his sharp claw-like feet, Malfasa slashed at Volta's right shoulder. Chee dash. The sharp aura that came out of his feet ripped apart the space. The attacks landed on Volta's right shoulder one after another, and completely severed it. The cracks filled hand of Volta dropped to the ground and turned into black smoke. Just as his entire shoulder was severed, Volta regained his senses. When he regained his senses, he saw Malfasa's sharp claw-like feet coming towards his left shoulder. Seeing the sharp claws of Malfasa, Volta quickly jumped back and dodged his attack. Volta did not feel any pain even though he lost his shoulder, but he was still baffled because he couldn't understand what just happened. Anastasia, who was watching the fight from the Shadow Realm, narrowed her eyes. When Volta lost focus earlier she noticed that Malfasa was also surprised. Which means he was not the one who did something to Volta. There is someone who is secretly watching everything Anastasia muttered when she saw what just happened. Malfasa clicked his tongue in annoyance when Volta returned to normal. Even though he completely severed his right shoulder, he was still not confident in beating him after all. Both of his hands were currently useless. I did not think he would recover so quickly. The person hiding in the void said in a surprised voice when he saw Volta recover so quickly. He glanced at Malfasa and noticed his ugly expression. He could tell that Malfasa had no confidence in beating Volta. I think you should take a look at. He shook his head and pointed one of his fingers towards Malfasa. This the best I can do for you little crow. The dark figure muttered and shot another invisible energy beam. I won't be able to help you now, or I might trigger the laws of this universe. The energy beam struck Malfasa. Just as the energy beam struck him, all of his injuries started to heal, and at the same time a red aura appeared around him. Malfasa was baffled when he saw all of his injuries started to heal, 
and was not able to understand what was happening. He could feel that other than healing him, the red aura around him was increasing his power as well. Sure enough, there is someone watching everything from the dark Anastasia muttered when she saw the red aura around Malfasa. Volta and Malfasa also understood this thing, but Volta did not care about the person who was helping Malfasa. Before all of Malfasa's injuries could recover, he appeared before him and punched. The fire burned around his fist and space was twisted because of the sheer power behind his punch. Malfasa was still thinking about his growing power, so he was not able to react on time when Volta appeared before him. Just when he thought he would be heavily injured again, he saw the red aura around him hardened and turned into a barrier. Boom dash. Volta's fist struck the barrier, but it just made some small ripples on it. Both Malfasa and Volta were shocked when they saw this. But soon Malfasa grinned and used its claws to slash at Volta who was still shocked. Malfasa's claw easily passed through the red barrier and struck Volta, sending him flying backwards. Before Volta could even crash to the ground after being sent flying, Malfasa flapped his wings and appeared beside him. His leg glowed with dark power and he kicked Volta, sending him flying high in the sky. Whoosh dash. Just as he sent Volta flying high in the sky, tens of deep orange fireballs appeared out of nowhere and struck the red barrier covering him. Boom dash boom dash. Well, destroying blasts engulfed the entire dimension, but the red barrier covering Malfasa only shook a little. Malfasa laughed like a mad crow when he saw this and flapped his wings again. He immediately appeared above Volta and stomped down on his head. Boom dash. Volta turned into a fiery meteorite and crashed to the ground, creating a colossal crater in the process. Malfasa wanted to continue his assault and appeared near Volta again. F.U. Asterisk off. But before he could attack again, a black aura emerged from Volta's body and pushed him away. Just as the black aura emerged, the temperature in the dimension started to drop, and a soul-chilling atmosphere engulfed the surroundings. Chapter 378 the purple flames burning in Volta's eyes suddenly turned pitch black. The deep orange flames coming out of his body cracks also turned black, and his aura started to change. Even though Volta's entire body was covered in flames, the aura around him become bone chilling. Anastasia who was sitting at the top of the black castle stood up, and her eyes opened wide. The conceptual energy of death she said in a tone filled with disbelief. I will show you something interesting. Suddenly she remembered what Volta said to her before leaving the Shadow Realm, and her mouth can't help but twitch. The figure who was hiding in the void also looked at Volta with utter shock on its face. How is this possible? I tried to grasp this energy for thousands of years, but I was not able to use it. Then how can this mere shadow undead use it? The figure inside the void gritted its teeth after seeing the black flames. It took some deep breaths to calm down, and killing intent flashed in its eyes. Even though it is the conceptual energy of death, its power is nothing when compared to that bastard's energy. If he thinks he can save himself using this, then he is just dreaming. Malfasa who was pushed back felt a soul-chilling coldness when he saw the black flames. What the hell is wrong with these black flames? He thought, wanting to understand what the black flames were before continue attacking. But Volta was already fuming with anger, so after pushing away Volta, he didn't wait even for a second. Death flame eruption. Rumble exclamation point exclamation point. Just as Volta spoke, the entire dimension started to shake. Some space fissures appeared all over the dimension, and the next second tsunamis of death flames erupted from the cracks on his body. In less than a second, the entire dimension that Volta created was engulfed by death flames. Malfasa just felt a chilling sensation before he was drowned in the death flames. Rumble exclamation point exclamation point. The entire dimension was shaking because of the power of death flames, and was looking like it would collapse at any moment. Crack crack. The red shield covering Malfasa started to crack, and a horror-filled look appeared on his face. Just by feeling the power of the death flames, he could tell that he won't be able to survive against the black flames without the red shield. Just when Malfasa was panicking, he noticed that the cracks on the red shield started to recover on their own. Malfasa was overjoyed when he saw this and sighed in relief. Like him, Volta and Anastasia also noticed the recovery ability of the shield. Volta can't help but frown when he saw this. Using the conceptual energy of death is not easy for him, and he could use it only for a few seconds. 
Anastasia was also unhappy because of the situation. She doesn't like the fact that there is someone who is helping Malfasa from the dark. Should I send someone else to help Volta? She thought with a slight hesitation on her face. She was hesitating because even if she awakened another shadow undead, it would not have enough time to use the shadow energy pool to strengthen itself. And without using the shadow energy pool to strengthen itself, the strength of shadow undead will definitely drop by a large margin. Damn, what should I do? Anastasia said in frustration when she noticed the death flames started to weaken. I think you should take a look at. Just when she was feeling irritated, she suddenly felt some energy fluctuations coming from the throne room. Her eyes trembled when she felt the energy fluctuations. She immediately disappeared from the top of the castle and appeared inside the throne room. Inside the throne room, Anastasia saw that the giant black throne was glowing with black light and a rune was being carved on it. The rune was looking like one of the runes that Evan got because of his growth link skill. When Anastasia saw the rune on the throne, her eyes widened in disbelief. The rune of evolution. She spoke in a voice full of disbelief. Master tried so many things to complete the rune of evolution, but he could never complete it. Then how is it possible for the rune of evolution to appear here? Anastasia's mind was in complete chaos after seeing the rune, and she even forget about Volta. Suddenly the energy fluctuations coming from the throne intensified, and the rune of evolution glowed with black light. Whoosh! Exclamation point. A beam of dark energy came out of the Rune of Evolution and went towards the portal of the Shadow Realm. Anastasia wanted to stop the energy, but before she could do anything, the energy left the Shadow Realm through the portal and arrived outside. I can't use it any longer, Volta said in an irritated voice as the death flames around him weakened. Malfacer was ready to attack Volta again when he saw death flames disappearing. The figure hiding in the void also smiled coldly when he saw this. Just as the death flames were about to disappear, a beam of black light tore through the dimension that Voltia created and struck him. A rune flashed on Volta's face for a brief second that no one was able to notice. Wilsh dash, boom dash. Before anyone could understand what just happened, the death flames coming out of Volta's body surged once again, and the dimension he created immediately collapsed. Hell, Malfacer wanted to seek help from the person who had helped him earlier. But before he could scream for help, the red barrier covering him shattered, and he was engulfed by death flames. Because the dimension Volta created collapsed, the death flames came out of it and spread into the outside world. The ground trembled as the powerful death flames ripped through thousands of kilometers of the lush forest, reducing trees to mere ashes. Mountains shook as the scorching heat melted their majestic peaks. All the monsters residing within thousands of kilometers of area around the Shadow Realm died. The place where Malfacer stood was now empty. It was obvious he was not able to survive after being engulfed by death flames. The death flame eruption did not last long, and in just three seconds, flames stopped coming out of Volta's body. But even after the flames stopped, no one did anything and just stood in the same place with stunned looks on their faces. There was just one question in their minds. What the hell just happened? Chapter 379 the black flames in Volta's eyes returned to being purple, and the soul-chilling aura around him disappeared. That power master muttered Volta, trying to control his excitement. Even though he was not sure what just happened, he just felt the power of the true conceptual energy of death a moment ago. And he knew there is only one person who can possess such powerful conceptual energy of death. How is this possible? The figure within the void said in disbelief. Looking at the vast area of destruction caused by death flames. He is still not here. Then how can he help him question mark dot 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 no. It is impossible for him to do something like this. There must be something that I don't know. There is no way he can help him enhance the conceptual energy of death to this degree. The eyes of the figure turned cold. And he looked at Volta. Who was still standing at the same place mumbling something. Thinking back on how he had tried everything possible to grasp the conceptual energy of death but had failed, killing intent flashed in its eyes. It wanted to destroy Volta, but it knew it can't do anything to him for now. I already interfered in his fight twice. If I try to do anything else, there is a very high chance that I will trigger the laws of this universe. Crack crack. Suddenly Volta's body started to crack. Volta was stunned when he noticed how his body was breaking, and a deep frown appeared on his face. 
What is happening now? Volta muttered, unable to understand why his body was breaking. The figure in the void looked at him and sneered. Does this stupid think he would still be fine after using the conceptual energy of death? I was waiting here all this time thinking that the person who helped Malfasa would come out. But looks like he has no intentions of showing up. Volta thought when no one showed up or attacked him even though he was standing at the same place doing nothing. Crack crack. Parts of his body started to break and fall down. I can't stay here any longer. I need to soak my body in the shadow energy pool. Volta used his flames to stabilize his body and started to walk towards the portal of the shadow realm. The figure in the void looked at Volta coldly, but did not do anything. When Volta was about to enter the shadow realm, he felt some powerful auras coming in his direction. He paused for a moment when he felt their auras, but then shook his head, they are still far away from here, so they can't be the ones who helped Malfasa. Volta did not wait for them and went inside the shadow realm. The figure hiding within the void also felt the auras of two people. He looked at the portal of the shadow realm one last time and also disappeared from there. I think you should take a look at. Five minutes later, Baphomet and Zagannath arrived above the portal of the shadow realm. Their expressions were bad and they were looking at the vast area of destruction around them. Looks like the person who killed him already escaped Zagannath said with slight anger on his face. When he didn't see anyone within thousands of kilometers of the area around the portal. They were already aware of Malface's death because of his connection with Baphomet. Baphomet's demon monarch call grants him the ability called Demon Domination. Using this ability, he can mark any demon, and that marked demon will become his loyal follower who will never betray him. Malfasa was one of his marked demons. So when he died, Baphomet lost his connection with Malfasa's mark, and knew he is dead. I think the person who killed Malfasa is definitely above disaster class level Zagannath said, after seeing the destruction caused by the death flames. Because of what happened at the last moment, the power of Volta's death flames surpassed the disaster class rank. So Zagannath was thinking that the person who killed Malfasa is someone whose rank is higher than the disaster class. Baphomet didn't confirm or deny Zagannath's guess, and was looking at the destroyed area. He could feel a very strange and powerful conceptual energy in the area, but it was the first time he had felt an energy like this. So he wasn't able to understand what kind of conceptual energy is this. After looking at the destroyed area for a moment, Baphomet looked at the portal of the Shadow Realm and narrowed his eyes. According to what Malfasa told me earlier, someone attacked them from the Shadow Realm. There is only Anastasia who is inside the Shadow Realm, so it must be her doing. Baphomet thought, but then a frown appeared on his face. But how is it possible for her to attack them when they were still outside of the Shadow Realm? From what we know, she is currently connected to the core of the Shadow Realm, making it impossible for her to leave it. Master, what should we do now? Baphomet came out of his thoughts after hearing Zagannath. Shall we continue attacking the portal to break the seal? Zagannath asked when Baphomet looked at him. Baphomet thought for a moment after hearing Zagannath and shook his head. I need to talk to Winterclaw before we do anything else. It seems that there is something about the Shadow Realm that we do not know. Baphomet said and extended his hand. His hand shined with dark red light, and the surrounding energy was sucked inside his hand. I also need to show this energy to Winterclaw. I am feeling there is something wrong with this conceptual energy. That guy is more knowledgeable than me when it comes to conceptual energy. So he must know what is this strange energy. Then I will station some people to keep an eye on the Shadow Realm. So that we will know if anything happens. Here Zagannath said after hearing Baphomet. Baphomet nodded his head and after looking at the Shadow Realm one last time. He disappeared from there. Chapter 380. Your Shadow Undead. Volta. Used the conceptual energy of death. Your shadow energy is resonating with the conceptual energy of death. Do you want to use the growth link skill to amplify the death energy of your shadow undead Volta? Yes slash no. Seeing the notifications, Evan was stunned and immediately ended the call with Sarah. What the hell is going on? Evan said in a baffled voice when he saw the notifications because he didn't understand anything. Who is this Volta? When did I give such a good name to my shadow undead? What is this conceptual energy? Many questions appeared in his mind making him confused. He immediately used his shadow senses and checked all 50 of his shadow undeads. There is nothing wrong with them. Evan frowned when he did not find anything strange with any of his shadow undeads. 
after checking them with his shadow senses. Do you want to use the growth link skill to amplify the death energy of your shadow on dead Volta? Yes slash no. The notification kept flashing before his eyes like it was tempting him. Even though there were many things that he did not understand, Evan's gut feeling was telling him to choose yes. Well, doesn't seem like I will die or anything. So why not Evan muttered and clicked yes, believing in his gut feeling. Just as he clicked yes, one of the runes etched on his chest lit up, and his growth link skill activated. As the rune glowed, Evan felt another connection that was similar to the one that he shares with his shadow undeads. But there was something different about this connection. This connection was very weak when compared to his connections with his other shadow undeads, and was looking like it would break at any moment. Swish exclamation point. Suddenly the shadow energy inside Evan's monarch core started to shake, and the next second it disappeared. Evan was stunned, and his face turned white when he saw his shadow energy suddenly disappear. But he soon relaxed when he noticed his shadow energy started to recover again. For a moment, he thought that he lost his shadow energy permanently. Where did my shadow energy go? Evan asked himself after seeing his shadow energy was recovering at its usual speed. The rune of evolution is now connected with the shadow realm. Just as he was thinking what happened to his shadow energy, a notification flashed before his eyes. Rune of evolution. Evan muttered in a confused voice when he read the notification. Suddenly he felt a burning sensation coming from his chest. The burning sensation was not painful but he still took off his shirt. When he took off his shirt, he saw one of the runes engraved on his chest was shining with black light. I think you should take a look at. Is this rune the rune of evolution? Evan said while arching his eyebrows when he saw the glowing rune on his chest. There were still two runes on his chest, and the second one was still not showing any kind of reaction. Evan doesn't even know why he has two runes engraved on his chest. Since the moment he received his growth link skill, the second rune engraved on his chest never showed any kind of reaction. After around one minute, the rune of evolution stopped glowing and returned to normal. The connection that was open due to his growth link skill also closed. And now Evan was not feeling the weak connection that he was feeling with Volta earlier. The rune of evolution is now connected with the shadow realm. Because of the connection between you, shadow realm and the rune of evolution, your mana is evolving into the world essence. Evan, question mark, question mark, question mark. He was completely speechless when he saw another notification that he did not understand. He checked his mana and saw there was nothing wrong with it. He closed his eyes for a moment and thought about all the things that happened. So that was not a hallucination Evan muttered and opened his eyes. When he received his growth link skill after his prime call reached the C rank, he felt thousands of connections which was similar to the connections that he shares with his shadow undeads. Those thousands of connections disappeared in a few seconds. So he thought he was hallucinating at the time, and didn't think much of it. But after seeing the earlier notification that was telling him about a shadow undead name, Volta, comma, and the weak connection he felt, he is now certain that he was not hallucinating at that time. So, if all of those connections are real, then doesn't it mean I have thousands of shadow undeads Evan muttered with a weird look on his face, because all of these things were too strange for him. He was not sure about many things and doesn't even know what he should do. But he was certain about one thing, Shadow Realm. He started to feel all of these strange things, after his monarch core reached to C rank, and formed a connection with the place called the Shadow Realm. If he wants to get the answers to his questions, he has to find this place called Shadow Realm. But the problem is, I don't know where this place called Shadow Realm is located question mark Evan muttered inside out loud thinking about the Tower of Ascension. He guesses that if he wants to find this place called Shadow Realm, he will have to use the Tower of Ascension and go to the higher world. Even though it is just my guess, the Shadow Realm is very likely to be located, there Evan said, putting on his shirt again. He once again analyzed his mana to see if there is anything different about it but found it is still the same. He stopped thinking about the evolution of his mana and stood up. I just need a little more time, and I'll be able to use the Tower of Ascension, Evan said. Looking at his cause progress, once I reach the higher world, I'll get answers to all of my questions. Chapter 381 Crackle, crackle. 
In the pitch black night, a powerful storm raged, illuminating the sky with mesmerizing lightning arcs that danced across the dark sky. With each blinding flash, the entire landscape of the wilderness was bathed in an eerie glow, revealing the trembling trees and distant mountains. Roar, roar, howl. Fear-filled roars and howls of the monsters reverted all over the wilderness as amid the wind and lightning storm. A small army of black monsters was marching forward killing and destroying everything that came into their path. Above the small army of monsters, a memorizing figure, clad in a formidable, scaled black armor was floating. His very presence seemed to defy the laws of nature, for his body crackled with purple lightning, and a subtle yet powerful green wind seemed to swirl around him as if drawn by an otherworldly force. Suddenly the eyes of the figure floating above the monster army glowed with yellow luster, and he looked at the far distance, trying to run. The man muttered, and a five meters long lightning spear formed before him. Whoosh! Exclamation point. Wind covered the lightning spear, and it started to spin. The spinning speed of the spear was so fast, that the space around it was wrapping and twisting. Go! The man waved his hand and the lightning spear shot forward turning into a streak of purplish green light. Screech exclamation point. In less than a second, the spear covered a distance of more than 10 kilometers and pierced the body of a B plus rank sky crawler who was trying to fly away after feeling their auras. Crackle. Among the small army of black monsters, lightning crackled around a wolf type monster and it immediately disappeared from its place. Whoosh exclamation point. Five seconds later, the black wolf appeared beside the man who shot the lightning spear. A lightning chain was coming out of the wolf's body, and the dead body of the sky crawler that was killed by the lightning spear earlier, was tied to it. Good job, Albelu. Evan patted Albelu's head, seeing how fast it brought the body of the sky crawler to him. His eyes shined with green light, and a sharp wind blade formed in his hand. He made a hole near the sky crawler's heart and smiled when he found a small core there. Evan put away the core and extended one of his arms. Suddenly demonic looking thorn filled vines came out of his hand and pierced the body of the sky crawler. In just a few minutes, the body of the sky crawler turned into dust, and Evan felt the rank of his prime core increased a bit. He smiled when he felt the rank of his prime core, and the lightning and wind around him disappeared. Evan sat down on Albelu's back and looked at the shadow on deads below him. It's only been 10 days since I started my mad hunt in the wilderness, and my prime core is already halfway to B plus rank Evan muttered with a smug smile on his face. It has been 10 days since he called Sarah, after dealing with the notifications that he received that day. He tried to contact her again but she never answered his call again. Although Evan was disappointed, he didn't care too much about it, because from what she said before, he could tell that she is planning to do something during the tournament. I think you should take a look at. He wanted to be fully prepared to face anything that Sarah had planned, so he returned to the wilderness. With the help of his shadow undeads, he killed many monsters in the past 10 days. He collected all of their cores to increase the rank of his monarch core and absorb their bodies using energy devouring skill to increase the rank of his prime core. After absorbing the bodies of all the monsters that he killed in the past 10 days, his prime core is now halfway to B plus rank. He was sure that it won't take him long to increase the rank of his prime core to A. I still have three days before we will leave for the central city Evan muttered, laying down on Albelu's back. The central city is the place where the tournament will be held. Honestly, now Evan had no interest in the tournament. With his current power, even an A-plus rank hunter won't be able to beat him, much less those students who will participate in the tournament. He was just going there because he never get a chance to visit the central city, and to see if he can get some clues about Sarah to finish her off. According to Sebastian, that brain-dead woman will be back tomorrow, Evan said with a twitching mouth, thinking about his gauntlets. I should have a good rest today, and I will go back to the city, tomorrow Evan said looking at the night sky. He wanted to check his gauntlets as soon as possible, so that if he found any problems with them, he could ask the blacksmith to fix them before he left for Central City. Evan slept through the night in the wilderness and was ready to go back to the city the next morning. He summoned back all of his shadow undeads who were guarding him the entire night, and flew away from the wilderness going back towards the city. Roar dash. Roar dash. Boom. While going back Evan suddenly heard some monster roars, and felt the auras of around 15 monsters. 
Sensing the auras of monsters, Evan's eyes lit up, and he immediately flew towards them. I can increase the rank of my core a little more Evan muttered, and soon arrived at the location from where he felt the auras of monsters. But when he reached there and saw what was happening, his eyes nearly popped out of their sockets. In front of him, a group of 15 monsters was chasing after 3 B plus rank hunters. In the front of the monster group was an A rank ice lion. But he was not shocked because of seeing running humans, nor he was shocked because of a rank ice lion. He was shocked because of a small purple colored B rank cat. This B rank cat was actually sitting at the head of the A rank ice lion, and was looking at the running humans with a smug expression on its face. That B rank cat was looking like the leader of the monster group, and even the A rank ice lion was acting like its melt. What kind of B rank cat is this? Evan muttered in a shocked voice, feeling stunned because of seeing how this small cat was using an A rank ice lion as its mount. Chapter 382 Evan opened and closed his mouth like a goldfish wanted to say something. But looking at the absurd scene in front of him, he doesn't know what to say. There was just a single question in his mind. What kind of Nico-chan is this? He was completely dumbfounded seeing a B-rank cat riding at the head of an A-rank ice lion. Not only the ice lion, he could see the other monsters of the group were also treating the small cat very respectfully. Damn, just what kind of nightmare is this? A B-plus rank man who was running away from the group of monsters, shouted with teary eyes. He and his friends just come out to hunt some monsters when they encountered this small B-rank cat. Thinking it would be an easy target, they attacked it wanting to kill it. But to their surprise, the small cat dodged all of their attacks, and suddenly a group of monsters appeared there out of nowhere. There were different kinds of monsters in the group, but for some reason, they did not fight among themselves instead started to attack them. The most shocking thing was that there was even an A-rank ice lion in the group. Seeing the furious monsters they immediately started to run away from there. But to their horror, the cat sat down at the top of the ice lion, and the group of monsters started to chase after them. Two of their friends already died because of the restless attacks of the monsters, and the remaining three were now despairing. After looking at the purple cat for some time Evan made up his mind. That cat is definitely not normal he muttered and flew downward. Since the cat is not normal, it was obvious that he wanted to add it to his shadow undead army. Moreover, there is also an A rank ice lion. Even though he is hunting in the wilderness for 10 days, he encountered just one A rank monster during all this time. Currently, among the 50 shadow undeads he has 2 are A plus rank, 5 are A rank, and the rest of the shadow undeads are at B plus rank. There is no way he is going to leave such a good opportunity to add some powerful monsters to his shadow army. While in mid-air, he summoned Albalu. Take them away from here Evan said to it pointing at the three running men. Suddenly lightning chains comes out of nowhere, and before the three running men could react, Albelu dragged them away from there. The group of monster who was chasing after the three men, was stunned when their targets suddenly disappeared from their sight. Because of Albelu's high speed, those monsters were not able to notice what just happened. Crackle exclamation point. Suddenly an arc of lightning landed some distance away from them, and Evan appeared there. The small cat sitting on top of the ice lion, tensed up at the sight of Evan. But after seeing he is alone, its tense body relaxed. Evan was also taken aback when he landed in front of the cat. Isn't it the phantom cat? When Evan landed in front of the monster group and looked at the cat closely, he finally recognized it. But I've never heard of a phantom cat with purple fur. Phantom cats are usually silver in color. Which is why Evan didn't recognize it right away. Phantom cats are experts at using illusion magic. But from what Evan could see, he was sure that this cat was definitely using something else. Dot I think you should take a look at. Roar dash. Evan came out of his thought hearing the chilly roar of the ice lion. The phantom cat ordered the group of monsters to attack Evan. Because it could tell that it was Evan who helped the three men escape. In the group of 15 monsters, one was A rank, three were B plus rank, five were B rank, and six were C and C plus rank. All of those monsters including A rank ice lion, used their skills and attacked Evan at the same time. Wind and lightning covered Evan's body, and he disappeared from the place he was standing evading all the attacks. After evading the attacks, when he looked at the phantom cat, he saw it was looking at him with a mocking look like it was calling him an idiot for coming alone in front of it. 
Evan's mouth can't help but twitch seeing the mocking look of the cat. If he wanted, he could easily take care of all the monsters by himself. But for some reason, he felt quite annoyed after seeing the mocking look of the cat. Let's see it you can still make this kind of face after seeing this. Evan smiled wickedly, and his shadow started to shake. Before the group of 15 monsters could attack once again, 49 black colored monsters appeared before them. The mocking expression immediately disappeared from the cat's face, and it looked at the shadow undeads with its yellow eyes wide open. It was the first time Evan appeared in front of someone alone, and summoned all of his shadow undeads like this. Just looking at the shocked expression on the cat's face, he felt a strange kind of satisfaction. But the next second Evan was taken aback, because the shocked look disappeared from the cat's face, and it looked at the shadow undeads with an excited expression. Why is this phantom cat looking excited? Evan can't help but mutter thinking something is wrong here. The next second he saw the yellow eyes of the phantom cat shine with purple light, and a strange energy wave come out of its body. When Evan felt the energy wave, he immediately recognized what it was. Psychic element. Evan remembered Caleb who was his teammate during the monster tide of Nathlian City. That guy also had psychic element related skills. Using psychic element, he was able to control monsters to some degree. Wait. Suddenly Evan thought about something and looked at his shadow undeads. This Nico is trying to control my shadow undead using its psychic element. Evan's heart skipped a beat when this possibility came into his mind. He does not know what is wrong with this phantom cat, and how it can control so many monsters, despite being only at B rank. He knew that if this cat is somehow able to control his shadow undeads, he will be in deep sh asterisk t. Psychic element attacks are also spiritual attacks, so they can definitely affect my shadow undeads. Evan thought and was about to call back all of his shadow undeads, when something that he did not expect happened. Meow dash. Just as the cat's psychic wave touched his shadow undeads, the cat meowed out in pain, and fall down from the head of the ice lion. In less than two seconds after falling down, the life force of the phantom cat disappeared. Evan. The small Nico-chan was dead. Chapter 383. Looking at the dead Nico-chan, Evan didn't know how to react. Should he be happy that the phantom cat was unable to control his shadow undeads? Or should he be confused about how it died? Raw exclamation point. But he didn't get much time to think about it, because just as the phantom cat died, all the 15 monsters it was controlling came back to their senses. After coming back to their senses the first thing they saw was Evan's shadow undeads, who were looking at them with their cold purple eyes. Oh, my all 15 monsters thought at the same time, how did we end up in front of these big bosses? Kill them. Evan stopped looking at the cat after seeing the monsters were thinking about running away, and ordered his shadow undeads. The 15 monsters tried to resist, but it was a futile effort because in front of so many shadow undeads, they were unable to do anything. Evan ignored the cruel scene where his shadow undeads ganged up on some low-level pitiful monsters, and went towards the body of the phantom cat. This cat must be a mutated monster Evan muttered after coming in front of the phantom cat. Monsters that are different from their own kinds are called mutated monsters. For example, orcs who can use elemental skills can be called mutated monsters, because normal orcs can't use skills. Phantom cats usually use illusion type skills, so this cat can be considered a mutated monster as it is completely different from the normal phantom cats. He looked at it carefully but didn't find anything strange with its body. How did it die? Evan muttered while scratching the back of his head. He looked at the dead body of the cat for some time, then shrugged his shoulders. Let's turn it into a shadow undead first. He used shadow resurrection skill, and since the phantom cat's body was in perfect condition, he succeeded in just one try. Soon a small shadow undead of a phantom cat appeared before him. Growth link skill activated. His growth link skill activated, and the phantom cat instantly reached B plus rank. Evan was stunned when the shadow undead of the cat appeared in front of him. Its spiritual power. Now that Evan was connected with the small cat he could easily feel its power. And he was shocked because the spiritual power of the small cat in front of him was even stronger than a normal A ranker. No wonder it could control so many monsters, even though it was just at the B rank Evan muttered and use the growth link skill second effect to see what kind of skills the small cat have. But when he tried to see its skills, Evan was shocked once again. 
he couldn't see its skills. There were just question marks when he tried to see its skills using the growth link. Now Evan looked at the small cat with even more interest in his eyes. Why can't I see its skill? Evan muttered with a pondering look on his face. Meow. Suddenly the small cat meowed out in a cute voice. But to Evan, this cute sound was like a clap of thunder. He looked at the cat with a twitching mouth. You want a name? Meow. The cat nodded its head. How about PC1? Evan thought inwardly remembering the dream he saw a few days ago. I think you should take a look at. But looking at the small cat, he found it hard to give such a strange name to a cute cat. Suddenly his eyes lit up when he remembered a good Japanese name. Hana your name will be Hana-chan. Meow. The phantom cat meowed out happily after receiving the name. During this time, his shadow undeads also killed the rest of the monsters. I will try to see what is wrong with Hana-chan. After going back Evan muttered and walked towards the 15 dead monsters. Adam and Oli already searched all of them and found four cores. Evan put away the cores and used Shadow Resurrection on the Ice Lion. Soon an A-rank Ice Lion was standing in front of him. Before the Ice Lion could ask for a name Evan said, Snow your name will be Snow. The Shadow Undead of the Ice Lion was dazed for a moment. It wanted to tell his new master that it is a traditional alpha male, and Snow sounded like a female's name. But before it could say anything, Evan already summoned it back into his shadow storage. After summoning back Snow, Evan looked at the dead bodies in front of him, and extended one of his hands. Energy devouring, demonic-looking thorn-filled vines came out of his hand, and pierced the bodies of the monsters. It took Evan around half an hour to completely refine the energy of all the dead bodies. After refining the energy of all the dead bodies, his prime core progressed by a good margin. Evan nodded his head after seeing the progress of his prime core and smiled. Crackle. Soon Albelu also came back. Did you drop them off at a safe location? Albelu nodded his head. Good Evan summoned back all of his shadow undeads and flew towards the city once again. He tried to look at Hana's skills once again, but found he still could not see anything. I need to talk with Hana-chan after going back Evan muttered, and soon arrived near the city. He landed in front of the city gate and went inside after showing his hunter card. The security of the city was still quite high because of what happened with Olivia and Adam. I wonder for how long they are going to stay on high alert. Evan thought after coming inside the city. After going inside, he used shadow wings and flew away from there. While flying, he pondered for a moment, and instead of going to the academy, he decided to go to Silver Star Guild first. That brain dead woman should be back by now. I want to see my gauntlets. Chapter 384 Why? Evan landed not far from the Silver Star Guild building and called Valerie, but just like before, she didn't pick up his call. Isn't she back yet? A frown appeared on Evan's face and he called Sebastian. Sebastian didn't take long to pick up his call and asked in a plain voice, What do you want? Your daughter. Crack. Evan heard the sound of something breaking and looked at his phone with a weird expression on his face. Just when he was about to ask Sebastian what happened, he heard his trembling voice. WH dot dot what did you just say? What did I say? Evan muttered in a confused voice, and began to think about what he had said. And just as he thought about what kind of answer he gave to Sebastian earlier, his mouth can't help but twitch. C-O-U-G-H asterisk. I just wanted to ask if Valerie is back. Evan said, coughing awkwardly. Sebastian was fuming with anger after hearing what Evan said earlier. How dare this bastard think about my daughter? His anger subsided only when he heard that Evan just wanted to know if she was back yet. He took a deep breath to calm down before asking, Where are you right now? I'm standing outside your guild building. Come to my office. I want to talk to you about Inferno Dungeon. Valerie will be here in about an hour. Sebastian said and ended the call. Did he already find the location of the Inferno Dungeon? Evan thought with a surprised expression on his face, and walked towards the guild building. Sebastian had already informed a guild employee about Evan. So when he entered the building, he was taken straight to the top floor of the building where Sebastian's office was located. After bringing him to the top floor, the employee left. Evan walked towards the end of the floor where Sebastian's office was located, and after reaching there, he knocked on his office door. Come inches. Evan heard Sebastian's voice after he knocked on the door and went inside. When he went inside, he saw Sebastian looking at him with narrowed eyes. 
He ignored Sebastian and looked around the office room. His attention was attracted by the red-colored long sword and the silver-colored armor which were hanging on the wall. S-rank artifacts. Evan thought when he saw the sword and armor. I hope you are not thinking anything strange about my daughter. Evan heard Sebastian's slightly cold voice and his mouth can't help but twitch. He walked towards him and sat down on a chair. You don't have to worry about that. Just tell me what you find about the Inferno. Dungeon dot I think you should take a look at. Sebastian took a deep look at Evan's face and after a moment nodded his head. He took out his phone and showed a map to him. If what you said was right then the Inferno dungeon should be located in this area. Sebastian said while showing him a map, according to the information that I received a few days ago, a member of the special unit of the Hunter Association died in this area. Evan looked at the area and raised an eyebrow. This area is in the wilderness of the Ravenhurst city, he said to Sebastian. Right? Sebastian nodded his head. You told Valerie about an S-rank hunter of the Dark Guild who is inside Ravenhurst city. I tried to look for her, but I did not find anything. Evan wasn't surprised that he couldn't find anything about Sarah. After all, it's not easy if you want to get information on an S-rank hunter. So what are you planning? Evan asked him. He also wanted to go to Inferno Dungeon but he will be leaving for the central city in two days. I will think about it after coming back from the central city, Sebastian said, putting away his mobile phone. Evan was surprised when he heard Sebastian, you are also going to central city. Valerie is going there, so of course I'm going too. Sebastian said like it is the most natural thing in the world. The Dark Guild is still targeting her. What if something happened during the tournament? Evan nodded his head and was happy that Sebastian would not be going to the Inferno dungeon alone. He also wanted to see what kind of dungeon it is. By the way, I wanted to ask you something. Suddenly Sebastian said while looking at him with a strange smile. What is it? Asked Evan, feeling something is wrong with Sebastian's smile. Do you remember the Frostworld dungeon? Sebastian asked, leaning back in his chair. Evan nodded his head because it was the dungeon where he went with Valerie. Seeing Evan nodding his head Sebastian's smile became even wider. You see, it has been quite some time since you guys cleared it. Normally that dungeon should have recovered in one month after you guys cleared it. But that dungeon recovered just a few days ago. It took almost four months for it to completely recover. Sebastian looked at Evan who was sweating buckets and asked. Do you know why something like this happened? Evan immediately shook his head and laughed nervously. How would I know? I'm no expert when it comes to dungeon related matters. Instead of me, you should ask someone who knows about dungeons. F U asterisk K, it must be because I stole the body of that ice troll from the dungeon. Evan cursed inwardly while trying to appear calm outside. My bad, you are right. How would you know anything about it? I should ask an expert about it, Sebastian said while nodding his head. Evan sighed in relief when he heard Sebastian and smiled inwardly. Looks like I am safe. By the way, I want to remind you something. Suddenly Sebastian said, attracting Evan's attention again. When Evan looked at Sebastian, his heart skipped a beat because he saw a cunning smile on his face. Sebastian pointed one finger over his eyes and asked, Have you forgotten that I can easily tell if a person is lying or not? F-U asterisk K. Evan could not help but curse out loud after hearing Sebastian. Chapter 385 the atmosphere in the office room was quite awkward. Sebastian had a smug smile plastered on his face, meanwhile Evan was somewhat embarrassed inwardly. Damn, this cursed skill. Evan was truly annoyed because he was busted by Sebastian for the second time. I need to find a skill or artifact that can help me stop the effect of these kinds of skills. Evan thought and cleared his throat. Well, since you already know then what do you want? Evan asked, and before Sebastian could say anything he spoke once again, and let me make this clear, if you want compensation for what I did, then you can forget about it. I don't have anything to give to you, I am just a dirt poor orphan. A C rank dungeon can easily generate income of a few million credits every month. And Evan knew that since it took three additional months for the Frost World dungeon to return to normal, Sebastian must have lost millions of credits. Currently, Evan is not short on credits, and he doesn't even know what to do with them. But when it comes to money, his mentality is that of a crooked person who will take his wealth to his grave. So there is no way he is going to give anything to Sebastian. I just got a few thousand credits after selling the body of that ice troll. 
There is no way I will pay millions of credits as compensation for that. Evan thought while looking at Sebastian with poverty-filled eyes. Sebastian's mouth can't help but twitch when he saw Evan's poverty-filled eyes. This shameless guy just killed Olivia and Adam a few days ago. I am sure he must have gotten many precious things from them. But he still has the gal to say he is just a dirt poor orphan. Do you think I would care about a few million credits? Sebastian asked after a moment. I just wanted to ask if you can bring out the bodies of monsters from the other dungeons as well. Evan was surprised when he heard Sebastian. But when he thought about it. It seemed reasonable to him that Sebastian wouldn't care about a few million credits. After all, his guild has tens of dungeons under its control, and he can easily earn billions of credits. TSK. World of rich people Evan thought and nodded his head. I can bring bodies outside from the other dungeons as well, and Don. T ask me how. Because I am not going to tell you Evan said in a clear cut voice, not wanting to talk about his title rule breaker. I have no intention of asking that either Sebastian said, rolling his eyes. He also knew that a greedy person like Evan would never tell others how to get the bodies of the monsters out of the dungeons. In his eyes, Evan just wants to monopolize the bodies of monsters found in dungeons. Then what do you want? Evan didn't care about what Sebastian was thinking and asked. I want you to bring out the bodies of some monsters from an A-rank dungeon. Evan wasn't surprised when he heard Sebastian because he already expected something like this. So he merely asked what matters to him. And what will I get in return if I bring out the bodies of A-rank monsters for you? The bodies of high-rank monsters are very valuable materials for making artifacts, potions, or many other things. So there is no way he will bring them out for Sebastian without getting anything in return. The value of the ice troll corpse that he stole from the Frost World Dungeon is nothing when compared to the bodies of A-rank monsters. What do want in return? Sebastian also knew that the value of A-rank monsters is very high, so he asked calmly. I will take the cause of the monsters that I will bring out, said Evan, without thinking even for a second. I need many cores to increase the rank of my monarch core. It is a good opportunity for me to collect some A-rank cores. Sebastian thought for a moment before he asked, how many bodies you can bring out from the dungeon? Around 30 Evan said after pondering for some time, I think you should take a look at. He did not tell Sebastian that he can bring out as many bodies as he wants, because he has some other plans in his mind. Alright then, you can take the cores found in those 30 bodies. The chances of finding a core inside a monster body are not high, so Sebastian did not care too much about it. From which dungeon do you want me to bring out the bodies? Evan asked after Sebastian agreed. Wyvern's Nest. Evan's eyes shined for a moment after hearing the name of the dungeon. He tried to control his excitement and asked in a normal tone, When do you want me to bring them out? Let's do it after coming back from the central city. Most of the A-rank hunters of my guild are currently busy. So we can't do anything about it for the time being. Evan frowned when he heard Sebastian. And after a moment he said, I will go into the dungeon alone. What do you mean? Sebastian asked while raising an eyebrow. I will not take anyone with me inside the dungeon, Evan said in a serious voice. I will go into the dungeon alone and bring out the bodies. Are you stupid? It is an A-rank dungeon. Do you think you will be able to survive inside it alone? Sebastian said while looking at Evan with a strange face. I know it is an A-rank dungeon, and you don't have to worry about my safety. I know what I am doing. Evan did not want to bring anyone with him because of the things that he was planning to do inside the dungeon. If the people of Sebastian's guild also came with him then he knew he won't be able to do anything. Sebastian looked at Evan's face for some time, and he could tell that he was serious about going alone. If you want to go alone then go ahead. It will be more beneficial for me this way, since I will be able to send those A-rank hunters somewhere else. Sebastian said while shrugging his shoulders. Evan smiled inwardly when he heard Sebastian. I will go to Wyvern's nest immediately after getting my gauntlets from Valery. You want to enter the dungeon today? Sebastian asked with a baffled expression on his face. Did you forget you have to leave for the central city in just two days? I just have to collect 30 bodies. I will be able to do it in less than a day, Evan said in a confident filled voice. When Sebastian heard him, he also realized that Evan is not going to clear the dungeon so he should be able to do it within two days. Suddenly Sebastian's office phone rang. He picked up the call and put it down in a few seconds. 
She is back, he said to Evan who already left his office before he could even react. Don't forget to tell the people who are guarding the dungeon that I will be there in a few hours. Chapter 386 Evan left Sebastian's office and went down from the top floor using the elevator. After leaving the elevator, he immediately saw Valerie talking to the receptionist of the guild. I can finally get my damn gauntlets, Evan said and walked towards her. While going towards her, he noticed her aura and was surprised to see she reached B plus rank. He came behind her and tapped on her shoulder. Valerie was startled when he suddenly tapped on her shoulder because she didn't feel anyone coming towards her. She quickly turned around and was surprised to see Evan. What are you doing here? Evan's mouth can't help but twitch seeing her surprised expression. This brain dead woman definitely forget about my gauntlets. Nothing, I am just here to ask about my gauntlets. Your gauntlets. Valerie made a confused face for a moment. But it didn't take her long to remember what Evan was talking about. Seeing her confused expression, Evan just looked at her with dead eyes. Not knowing what to say. Sorry. I completely forget about them, Valerie said, and looked at the receptionist she was talking to. She said goodbye to her and asked Evan to come with her. Where are we going? Evan asked in a confused voice because instead of leaving the guild building, she was going towards another receptionist. Actually your gauntlets were almost ready before I left for the dungeon. I asked the blacksmith to deliver them here as soon as they would be ready, so I think they should be here. Actually your gauntlets were almost ready before I went to the dungeon. I told the blacksmith to deliver them to Silver Star Guild building as soon as they are ready. So I guess they should already be here. Valerie said and arrived before one of the receptions situated on the ground floor. Mark, is there a parcel for me? She asked the receptionist who was doing something on the computer. The receptionist looked at her and nodded his head. He opened a drawer and took out a small package. Thanks. Valerie thanked him and left from there after taking the package. She brought Evan to one of the rooms located on the ground floor and handed him the package. Here are your gauntlets. Evan immediately took the small box and opened it. Inside the box, he found a storage ring. He linked the ring to himself and looked inside it. Inside the storage ring, Evan saw a pair of ruby red colored gauntlets. He took out the gauntlets and felt the temperature around him increased a little bit. Blazabringer Gauntlets A plus rank. Gauntlets made from the scales of a lesser fire basilisk. When equipped, the strength of the user increased by 20%. Each strike from the gauntlets leaves a burning mark on the target causing continuous damage over time. The user can use Basilisk's Wrath and Inferno Aura skills while wearing the gauntlets. I think you should take a look at Inferno Aura Passive Skill. When the user is enraged or in a heightened emotional state, their gauntlets emit a blazing aura, enhancing their attacks and making them even more formidable. Basilisk's Wrath. Upon activation, the Blazabringer gauntlets transform into basilisk-like claws, empowering the user's attacks with fiery breath. Each strike of gauntlets releases scorching flames that can pierce through even the toughest defenses. Skill duration. 3 minutes. This skill can be used twice a day. 20% increase in strength Evan muttered while holding his breath. His strength is already quite high, but after wearing the gauntlets, it will increase even more. The burning effect and the skills of the gauntlets are also top notch. Inferno Aura is a passive skill, which means Evan can't activate this skill at will. This skill will activate on its own, depending on his emotional state. He was also satisfied with the Basilisk's Wrath skill. I can't wait to test these gauntlets. Evan thought and he knew where he has to go to test these gauntlets. While Evan was checking the gauntlets, Valerie was looking at him with her mouth slightly open. She did not notice it earlier. But now that she looked at his rank, she can't help but feel shocked. How the hell he is at B plus rank? Last time when Valerie saw Evan was when he left for the Naphlium city. And at that time he was just a D plus rank hunter. So she can. T understand how he reached B plus rank in such a short amount of time. Is this guy hacking? Valerie thought while trying to hide her shock. Alright, I am leaving. Suddenly she heard Evan's voice and came out of her thoughts. What a monster Valerie took a deep breath and stopped thinking about Evan. S rank. Is everything okay with them? She asked, looking at the storage ring in his hands. Yeah, they are perfect, Evan said with a smile on his face. Thanks for your help. No need to thank me. Valerie said while waving her hand, the information you gave to me was far more valuable than these gauntlets. 
Evan just nodded his head after hearing her and turned around to leave. By the way, are you going to test the power of those gauntlets? Valerie suddenly asked as soon as he turned around. Yeah, why? Evan asked looking at her. Nothing, just don't forget we have to leave for the tournament in two days. Alright, Evan nodded his head and left the room. There is no way I am going to miss the chance to deal with that Sarah. After leaving the guild building, Evan took out his phone and looked for the location of Wyvern's Nest Dungeon. Although it is a very famous dungeon and he heard about it many times, he has never been there, so he does not know its actual location. After he confirmed the location of the dungeon, Evan used his shadow wings and flew away. With this dungeon, I might be able to push my prime core to a rank. Before leaving for the central city, Evan muttered to himself, as his eyes gleamed with excitement. The dungeon was quite far away from the Silver Star Guild building, but Evan still reached there in three hours because of his high agility. Chapter 387 There are ten floors in Wyvern's Nest Dungeon. This dungeon is filled with different kinds of Wyverns like Fire Wyverns, Wind Wyverns, Crystal Wyverns, Poison Wyverns and many more. On the first four floors of the dungeon, there are Wyverns ranging from C plus to A rank. On the fifth floor of the dungeon, there will be a boss wyvern that will be at A plus rank, and its power will be slightly stronger than a normal A plus rank monster. After the fifth floor, all the wyverns will be above B rank, and there will be many A and A plus rank wyverns on these floors. Evan has to leave for the central city in two days, so he was thinking about reaching the fifth floor in these two days. If other people heard Evan wants to reach to the fifth floor of an A rank dungeon in just two days, they will think he is insane. Normally it would take hunters many days to clear an A rank dungeon after all, it is not easy to kill A rank monsters. Moreover, after some fights hunters have to take rest and heal their injuries. But Evan wasn't worried about any of these things because of his shadow undeads. Sebastian already informed the people who were guarding the Wyvern Nest dungeon about Evan, so he was easily able to enter it after reaching there. When he stood in front of the dungeon portal, Evan could feel powerful energy fluctuations coming out from it. The energy fluctuations of the A rank dungeon were far more powerful than B rank dungeons. Moreover, his mana was reacting strangely when he stood in front of the dungeon portal. Evan was confused when he noticed the mana inside his body was acting strangely. But he didn't think too much about it, because he was still able to use all of his skills without any problem. Let's try to reach A rank in these two days. And Evan muttered and stepped inside the portal, make a flying legion of wyverns. Upon entering the portal, Evan found himself standing at the edge of a desert. The desert was stretching to the horizon, and he could see nothing but deep yellow sand. The sun was burning like a deep orange fireball, and the temperature inside the dungeon was quite high. Evan looked behind him and saw the exit portal of the dungeon. So in order to clear this dungeon floor, I have to reach the end of this desert. Evan wasn't surprised when he saw the desert, because he already had the details of the first five floors of the dungeon. According to the information I have, there are many sand and fire wyverns inside this desert Evan muttered, as his shadow flickered a bit. Whoosh! Exclamation point. His sunfire armor shot out from his shadow storage, and he wore it. I should be able to reach the end of the desert in a few hours since there are not many high-ranking wyverns on this floor. After his armor, Evan wore his Blazabringer gauntlets, and felt his strength increase by a large margin. Ariel. After wearing all of his artifacts, Evan said, and his shadow expanded. Rhea. A loud shriek of a bird resounded, and suddenly a ten meters long, bird-like shadow undead came out of Evan's shadow storage. It was an A-rank wind sparrow that Evan killed in the wilderness during his ten days of hunt. He jumped at the back of Ariel and ordered it to move deeper into the desert. Rhea. Ariel shirked out loud and flapped its wings. The wind started to circle around its body, and it flew into the vast desert. While standing on Ariel's back, Evan summoned seven shadow undeads. Among the summoned shadow undeads, only Elysia was at B plus rank, while other shadow undeads were all A and A plus rank. He wanted to clear this floor as fast as possible. So he only summoned the shadow undeads who could fly at higher speed. Don't release your aura and spread in the surrounding area, Evan said to his summoned shadow undeads. And all of them spread around. One minute later Evan felt some mana fluctuations. And looked in the direction of Snow, who was flying three kilometers away from him. Roar dash. 
Suddenly a roar which was somewhat similar to a dragon's roar sounded, and a sand tornado rose from the ground going straight towards snow. The sand inside the tornado was spinning so fast that it could easily grind iron into fine powder in less than 10 seconds. But seeing the sand tornado coming towards itself, snow was not phased at all. A cold aura burst forth from its body, and the sand tornado coming towards it was immediately frozen solid. Even after freezing the tornado, the cold aura did not stop, and froze 100 meters of the area below snow. After freezing the ground, snow went down and the purple flames inside its eyes blazed for a moment. Suddenly some ice chains came out and pierced the frozen ground. Evan already knew what Snow was doing. So he did not stop it. I think you should take a look at. Soon the ice chain that pierced the frozen ground pulled out a frozen body of a 5 meters long yellow colored wyvern. The face of the wyvern was a bit similar to the dragons that Evan had seen in his dreams. Its entire body was covered in yellow scales. A long spikes filled tail was coming out of its back and it had two wings on its back, which were currently folded. The wyvern was just at the C-plus rank, so it immediately died after being frozen by snow. Sand wyverns possess sand manipulation skill. Using this skill they can manipulate the sand, and can easily travel while hiding inside the sand. Snow brought the body of the sand wyvern to Evan who threw it inside his shadow storage, and asked his other shadow undeads to see if this wyvern had a core. After throwing the body inside his shadow storage, Evan continued to move forward. In just a few seconds he received a message from Aqua that the wyvern doesn't have any core. Evan was not surprised by this after all it is not easy to find cores. While still flying on Ariel's back, Evan took out Sand Wyvern's body. He used wind manipulation skill to hold it in mid-air and stretched out his hand. Energy devouring. Devouring vines priced the body of the wyvern and Evan directed its energy towards his prime core. He did not waste his shadow energy turning this wyvern into a shadow undead. Because it was just a C plus rank wyvern. The lowest rank wyvern that he can find inside this dungeon. So instead of wasting his shadow energy by turning it into a shadow undead. He just decided to look for a stronger wyvern. Soon the body of the sand wyvern disappeared. And Evan nodded his head in satisfaction. 20 minutes later Evan was using energy devouring skill on a B plus rank sand wyvern. That Elysia brought when he suddenly felt powerful mana fluctuations. Finally Evan said when he felt mana fluctuations. And threw the body of B plus rank sand wyvern inside his shadow storage. Boom dash. The sand below him suddenly burst open, and tens of sand bullets shot towards him. Rear. Ariel shrieked out loud and easily dodged all the sand bullets. Whoosh dash. Suddenly a 20 meters long sand wyvern shot out from the sand and stopped some distance away from him. Roar dash. The wyvern roared towards Evan, and the aura of a rank monster engulfed the surroundings. All this time Evan was eagerly waiting for an A rank wyvern to show up, so that he can test his power. After wearing the gauntlets, that can increase his strength by 20%. When he saw the A rank wyvern, he did not wait even for a second. Crackle! Lightning crackled around him, and wind started to cover his entire body. The sunfire armor he was wearing lit up as he used the stored energy inside it to increase his strength and speed. Sunfire armor A plus rank. Crafted from the radiant scales of a solar wyvern, the Sunfire armor harnesses the power of sunlight. It provides its wearer with a great defense. The armor decreases all magical and physical type damage received by the wearer by 35%. When worn, the armor absorbs sunlight, storing its energy within the scales. This energy can be unleashed to create blinding light bursts, heal wounds, and provide enhanced strength and speed during the day. When Evan released his full strength the air around him trembled. The instincts of a rank wyvern suddenly started to scream when it felt Evan's aura. Feeling the lethal threat coming from Evan it wanted to run away. But before wyvern could turn around Evan suddenly disappeared from Ariel's back. And appeared above its back. Roar dash. A roar of the ancient beast reverted in the surrounding area as Evan punched down on wyvern's back. The power of his punch turned into a ruby red colored fist force and heavily struck wyvern on its back. Crack! Sound of bone cracking resounded, and the sand wyvern was sent flying downwards like a broken kite. Its yellow scales shattered, and the fist force penetrated its body, destroying its internal organs. 
Even before the wyvern could roar out in pain its body crashed to the ground, and its life force disappeared, because all of its internal organs were destroyed by the fist force. Evan, Chapter 388 Howl! Exclamation point. Crackle! Crackle! Purple lighting filled the sky, and bolts of lightning rained down towards a 20 meters tall brown colored wyvern. Seeing the bolts of lightning, the wyvern shone with brown light, and soon its body was covered in dense earth element. The bolts of lightning struck the body of the wyvern, but the dense earth element around it easily nullified the lightning arcs. The wyvern was actually an A-rank earth wyvern. Even though A1 and A2 were using powerful lightning skills on it, it was still able to resist their attacks, because of its tough defense. Evan was looking at the fight from the sky sitting on Albelu's back. It has been almost 30 hours since he entered the dungeon. At the moment, he was at the end of the fourth floor, and after killing the Earth Wyvern in front of him, he would be able to go to the fifth floor. He was afraid that he won't be able to reach the fifth floor in time, so he didn't take even a single break during the past 30 hours. Now that he was at the end of the fourth floor, he decided to take a short break before moving onto the fifth floor, which is why he only sent A1 and A2. To fight against the Earth Wyvern. If he had sent all of his shadow undeads, this Earth Wyvern would have died even before realizing what had happened. After 20 minutes, A1 and A2 were still trying to kill Earth Wyvern, but its defense was like a turtle shell that they were not able to break. I don't think A1 and A2 will be able to break its defense anytime soon, Evan muttered, and looked at Oli, who was floating bedside him. Help them, Oli. Just as he said to her, the Cursorbane staff in Oli's hand glowed with black light. Who, who? Strange ghost-like entities appeared around her, making weird sounds, and giving an eerie feeling to anyone who looked at them. Curse of the Reaper. Curse of the Haunted. She used two of her curses, and a dark beam of light struck the Earth Wyvern, who was fighting against A1 and A2. Just as the curses hit it, a skull mark flashed on its giant face for a moment. Curse of the Reaper. The target becomes marked by the Grim Reaper, making them more susceptible to death and critical injuries. Any wounds they receive become harder to heal. Curse of the Haunted. The target is plagued by malevolent spirits, causing hallucinations, nightmares, and paranoia. The constant psychological torment makes it difficult for target to maintain focus. Because of the Curse of the Haunted the Wyvern immediately lost focus, and the dense earth element around it disappeared. Crackle. Without the protection of the earth element, the bolts of lightning struck the brown scales of the wyvern and tore them open. Generally, even without the protection of the earth element, lightning blots shouldn't be able to tear the hard scales of the earth wyvern. But because of Oli's reaper's curse, the lightning was able to tear open its scales. Raw exclamation point. The earth wyvern roared in pain when lightning tore open its scales and red blood spurted out. Feeling the pain, the wyvern's eyes flashed with anger and earth elements started to gather around it. In less than a second two large earth spears formed before it aiming towards A1 and A2. But before it could shoot them towards A1 and A2, the skull mark on its face shined, and the curse of the haunted once again acted. I think you should take a look at. The earth wyvern once again lost focus, and both of the earth spears crumbled. Crackle. A1 and A2. Both of them flashed with purple lightning, and instantly appeared before the Earth Wyvern, who was trying to resist the curse of the Haunted. Lightning crackled around their claws, and they slashed at its body. Their sharp claws tore open two large wounds on Wyvern's back, and sent destructive lightning inside its body. Roar dash. The Wyvern felt a pain like never before, when destructive lightning went inside its body and attacked its internal organs. Oli's curses were still affecting the wyvern, so its mind was in complete chaos. Because of the curse of Haunted, it was not able to dodge any attack of A1 and A2, and because of the curse of the Reaper, all of its injuries were becoming critical. Within minutes A1 and A2 seriously wounded Earth Wyvern, and after a while easily killed it. Seeing the dead wyvern Evan's eyes flashed and he jumped down. It's finally time Evan said and asked Albelu to look for the core. Albelu looked for the core, but did not find anything. Evan's expression remained the same even after seeing Albelu did not find any core, because currently, his entire focus was on his prime core. He stretched out his hand and used energy devouring skill. He did not even use shadow resurrection, 
because he already has shadow undead of an A-rank earth wyvern. Demonic-looking thorn-filled vines came out of his and pierced the body of the dead wyvern. The body of the wyvern started to decay, and a large amount of energy went towards his prime core. A few minutes later the body of the wyvern disappeared and slowly a mana vortex started to form above Evan's head. In just a few seconds the mana vortex was completely formed, and its size was around 200 meters. Evan closed his eyes and focused on his prime core, as it absorbed a large amount of mana from the vortex. Evan felt his power increasing in all aspects. His spiritual power was also increasing, and his spiritual sense was becoming more powerful. This process lasted for about 10 minutes before the mana vortex started to disappear. Soon the mana vortex above Evan's head disappeared and he opened his eyes. His prime core reached a rank. But Evan did not rush to see if he got anything new, because he was waiting for the main show. Suddenly he felt a slightly burning sensation on his chest, and his lips curved upwards. It is here, Evan muttered, and a notification flashed before his eyes. Your growth link skill activated. Suddenly his shadow flickered, and he summoned all of his shadow undeads. Just as he summoned his shadow undeads, a completely broken scene that can make any sane person go insane took place. Chapter 389. Your growth link skill is activated. All of Evan's shadow undeads suddenly came out of his shadow storage. Among his shadow undeads, 20 were wyverns. There were many different kinds of wyverns in his small group, like fire wyverns, crystal wyverns, sand wyverns, mirage wyverns and many more. Most of these wyverns were B plus or A rank monsters. When Evan's growth link skill activated, the rune of evolution appeared on the faces of all of his shadow undeads, who were below A rank including Elysia, Necros and others. Many powerful auras exploded outwards at the same time, and all of his shadow undeads who were below A rank, reached to A rank. Evan looked at Necros whose height started to increase after it reached A rank. In just a few seconds it was 10 meters tall. The horn at the center of its head was now glowing with blood red color giving a dreadful feeling. Aqua's body also changed, and now it was 5 meters tall. Eclipse and Elysia's bodies remained the same, but their aura become far more powerful than before. The small cat Hana also reached a rank, but there was no change in its body. It was still looking like a small Niko-chan. Astronax's body became more muscular after it reached a rank, and the horns on its head were now 2 meters long. Shadow undeads like A1 and A2 who were at A rank, did not receive any kind of boost this time. The evolution process did not take long, and soon the rune of evolution stopped glowing. All of his shadow undeads who were below B plus rank were now at A rank. When the rune of evolution stopped glowing, and Evan looked at the level of his shadow undeads, he saw all of the undeads who reached A rank just now were at the beginning stage of the A rank. Which means they were still far from reaching A plus rank. But Evan was not surprised by this, because his monarch core is still at B rank, and he needs to increase its rank as well. I have collected many cores in the past few days. I will absorb them using monarch core, and will see how much I can progress with it Evan said, and glanced at his shadow undeads. Many of them must have gotten new skills since they reached A rank. Evan summoned back all of his shadow undeads. Currently, he has 49 shadow undeads. Other than 20 wyverns and his named shadow undeads, 5 are orcs, and the rest are other shadow undeads that he created in the wilderness. To save the shadow undeads of wyverns, he removed some of the shadow undeads that he created in the wilderness. Currently, he can save one more shadow undead, he left this spot for the boss monster of the fifth floor. It will be an A plus rank wyvern, so it was obvious that he wanted to get its shadow undeads. I will make that A plus rank wyvern commander of the 20 wyverns Evan muttered thinking about the A plus rank wyverns that he will face on the fifth floor. Let's see if I got anything new after reaching A rank. Evan muttered and opened his status window. Name. Evan. Rank. A. Monarch core rank. E. Strength. A. Agility. A. Mana. A. Stamina. A. Intelligence. A. Luck. A. Charm. A. Shadow energy. E. Skills. Ash shadow walk, shadow storage, dimensional shadow bullet, ice chains, wind manipulation, shadow shrouding wings, temporal velocity, energy devouring, Thuda tempest, lightning creation, temporary. Physique. Ash shadow monic physique. 
Title, Rule Breaker, Ruler of the Shadow Realm question mark question mark question mark. Class, Ash Shadow Necromancer. Class Skills, Ash Shadow Resurrection, Shadow Save, Shadow Senses, Shadow Possession, Shadow Nails, Death Transfer, Growth Link. Nothing again Ha Evan was disappointed when he saw he didn't get anything, although his prime core reached A rank. Looks like I will get new things only after increasing the rank of my monarch core he said, and sighed out loud. Lightning creation is the skill that he took from Albelu, using the second effect of his growth link skill. Thinking about his growth link skill, Evan checked its details to see if there was anything new in it. And to his surprise, he saw there was really something. There was no new effect, but the second effect of his growth link skill changed. You can take two skills from any of your shadow undead for three days. After taking skills, you will not be able to use this effect for three days. Previously he could take only one skill from his shadow undeads, but now he can take two skills from them. Evan grinned when he saw this, finally there is something. Last time when his prime core reached B plus rank, he did not get anything new. So after seeing this time he at least got something Evan was quite happy. It is a pity I still can't take their skills permanently, but it is still better than nothing. Evan thought about it for a moment and decided to use this effect later. He was sure that many of his shadow undeads must have gotten new skills after reaching a rank. He wanted to check their new skills before deciding which skill he wants to take. After seeing the effect of his growth link skill, he closed his status window and looked at the portal that appeared after A1 and A2 killed the Earth Wyvern. Without thinking too much he went towards the portal and entered giant purple colored door that was releasing a powerful aura in it. Upon entering the portal he found himself standing in front of a giant purple colored door that was releasing a powerful aura. Evan wasn't surprised when he saw the giant door and pushed it open. As the door opened, a black space appeared before him. Seeing the black space, Evan took a deep breath and stepped inside the booze room. A white light flashed, and Evan appeared inside the boss room of the fifth floor. Kukjuku. After appearing in the boss room, he didn't even get time to look around when his ears buzzed, and he heard a loud rooster's call. Evan was startled when he heard the loud call of a rooster, and quickly looked in the direction of the sound. When he looked in the direction of the sound and saw the monster responsible for making the sound, his mouth opened wide, and he looked at it with a dazed look on his face. Chapter 390 Evan was startled when he heard the loud call of a rooster, and quickly looked in the direction from where sound came from. When he looked in the direction of the sound, his mouth opened wide for a moment. But then he showed an elated expression. A cockatrice. Evan said in an excited voice when he saw the monster who made the sound earlier. Cockatrice is a unique creature with the body of a wyvern and the head of a rooster. The monster standing in front of Evan was also a cockatrice. Its body resembles that of a wyvern with a sleek and muscular build. It had two powerful hind legs and a pair of wings extending from its back. The most striking feature of the cockatrice was its rooster-like head. It had a comb on top of its head. Its beak was sharp and pointed, capable of delivering a venomous bite. The eyes of the cockatrice were intense and piercing, with a reptilian gaze that can petrify those who meet its gaze. Its wings were membranous and leathery, resembling those of bat wings. Its tail was long and muscular, ending in a pointed tip that it can use as a weapon in combat. Looks like my luck is quite good. Evan muttered while taking deep breaths. He knew that he would face an A-plus rank monster. That will be more powerful than a normal A-plus rank monster. But he didn't expect two from his body, as he used mana reinforcement. Because of the mana sea cockatrice that can be considered powerful even among A-plus rank monsters. Suddenly the deep blue eyes of the cockatrice lit up, and Evan felt his body turning stiff. It must be its petrifying gaze Evan muttered, and mana burst forth from his body as he used mana reinforcement. Because of the mana reinforcement, the petrifying gaze of Cockatrice lost its effect. Seeing Evan was completely fine, the Cockatrice unfolded its wings. The sharp scales on its wings shone with azure light, and suddenly shot towards Evan. Evan felt a sharp aura coming out from the scales, but he didn't try to dodge. After advancing to A rank, the power of his skills increased as well, and he wanted to try them. He extended his palm outward, and suddenly a wind vortex emerged from it going straight towards incoming scales. The power of his wind manipulation skill was far higher than before. The wind vortex swallowed all of the sharp scales that were coming towards him. But even after swallowing the scales, 
the wind vortex didn't stop and continued to move towards Cockatrice. Cut Jiku. The Cockatrice crowed out loud when it saw the wind vortex coming towards it and used its wings to fly up. Evan smirked when he saw this. His eyes shined with green light and suddenly the wind vortex picked up speed and changed its direction, going upwards. The cockatrice did not expect the wind vortex to change direction like this, but it still reacted on time and opened its beak. Fire spun around its mouth and a spinning fire breath came out from its beak clashing against the wind vortex. The wind and fire collided in a violent maelstrom, creating a mesmerizing spectacle of twisting flames and gusting winds. The ground trembled beneath the onslaught, and the very fabric of reality seemed to warp under their titanic clash. As the forces collided, explosions of fire and wind erupted in all directions, tearing apart the landscape and creating an expanding wave of destruction. Crackle! Lightning crackled around Evan, and everything slowed down in his eyes, he used temporal velocity, and disappeared from the place he was standing. The cockatrice just closed its mouth after unleashing fire breath, and was about to fly away when Evan suddenly appeared before it. There was a lightning ball in his right hand, before the cockatrice could react, he pressed the ball right at its face. Kaboom he said, and the lightning ball exploded turning into a storm of lightning that engulfed the entire body of the cockatrice. Because of the lightning, Cockatrice's body stiffened, and it started to fall down from the sky. Even though Cockatrice can be considered a powerful monster among the a ranks, it was still no match for Evan. Even before reaching A rank, Evan could kill a rank monsters. Now that his prime core is at A rank, it was all easy for him to take care of an a rank monster. Before Cockatrice could crash to the ground, Evan once again appeared before it. The cockatrice was not able to move its body because of the lightning, but it still used its sharp tail and whipped at Evan. Evan was using temporal velocity, so he easily saw how the tail was coming towards him. He lifted his right hand and easily caught the incoming tail. At the same time lightning covered his left fist, and he punched down at cockatrice's face. Crack dash. Cuck dick. The sharp beak of the cockatrice was broken because of Evan's punch, and it crowed out in pain. Red blood spurted out from its mouth, and it crashed to the ground, creating a large crater in the process. Just as cockatrice crashed to the ground, Evan used shadow nail skill, and five cursed nails appeared in his hands. He threw them towards cockatrice's shadow and successfully immobilized its body. Some of cockatrice's bones were broken because of earlier impact and it was feeling a pain like never before, but because of shadow nails, it was not even able to move its body. Seeing the cockatrice who couldn't even move Evan's one eye shined with green light, while the other one turned purple. He lifted his hand and a three meters long purple lightning spear covered in sharp wind element form before him. Whoosh! Exclamation point. The spear started to spin, and because of its destructive power, the space around it started to shake. The heart of Cockatrice turned cold when it felt the destructive power of the wind and lightning spear. It started to struggle furiously, and the shadow nails which were stopping it started to shake. But Evan's face remained the same seeing this, and he slashed down with his hand. Cuck The Cockatrice was finally able to resist the effect of shadow nails, and was about to move away, when the wind lightning spear suddenly appeared before its head in a blink of an eye. Before it could do anything, the spear struck its head, the scales covering its head were instantly shattered, and the spear penetrated its skull. Destructive lightning and the sharp wind went inside its head, and its mind instantly turned into a meat pest. Thud. With a loud thud cockatrice dropped to the ground, and its life force slowly disappeared. Chapter 391. Now even without using shadow energy. I can face a hunter who just reached S rank Evan muttered, seeing the dead cockatrice. He landed beside it and summoned Adam to look for the core, but unfortunately, he didn't find any core this time. Even without core, I can get its skills using the second effect of growth link skill. Evan wasn't disappointed when he did not get the core of the cockatrice, and used his shadow resurrection skill. Shadow resurrection failed. The scales of cockatrice cracked and blood started to come out from its body. When Shadow Resurrection failed, Evan raised an eyebrow and used Shadow Resurrection again. Shadow Resurrection failed. Whoosh. The cracks on Cockatrice's body expanded and a fountain of blood erupted from its body. Evan's heart skipped a beat when he saw the condition of the Cockatrice's body. 
Don't tell me I unknowingly damaged its body too much, Evan said with cold sweat trickling down from his forehead. I should have asked Elysia to heal it before I killed it. Healing skills don't work on someone after they are dead, so Evan was regretting that he didn't heal its body before he killed it. He looked at the broken body of Cockatrice for some time, and took a deep breath. His eyes flashed with green light, and he created a wind barrier around him. I hope it won't explode in a bloody mess, Evan said and used Shadow Resurrection once again. When Shadow Energy seeped inside the broken body of Cockatrice, it started to shake violently. Evan strengthened the wind barrier around him, thinking the body is going to explode. But after a few seconds, the body stopped shaking and... Cut Jiku. A rooster's call reverted on the fifth floor of the dungeon. Hearing the call of the rooster, Evan finally sighed in relief. It looks even more BADA asterisk S now that it turned into a shadow undead. Evan muttered when he saw the pitch black body of Cockatrice with purple flames burning in its eyes. He looked down at the broken body of the Cockatrice, and without hesitation used energy devouring. This time he directed the energy towards his monarch core. The amount of energy he received from the Cockatrice was far more than other monsters. After all, it was the boss monster of the dungeon. After absorbing the energy he once again looked at Shadow Cockatrice. Cud. Come back. Before the Cockatrice could say anything Evan summoned it back. I will think for its name while going back Evan muttered. Since he knew Cockatrice wanted to ask him to give it a name. After summoning it back Evan looked around for a bit and when he found nothing interesting, he decided to leave the dungeon. Five minutes later, a white light flashed outside of the Wyvern Nest dungeon, and Evan appeared there. I think you should take a look at. Just as he appeared outside of the dungeon, he felt his mana acting strangely again, just like how it was acting when he entered the dungeon. He analyzed his mana, and this time found that the mana inside his core was different from before. Normally the mana inside his core looks like a light blue liquid, but currently, a very small portion of his mana was shining in rainbow color light. What is this rainbow color energy? Evan frowned when he saw the rainbow colored energy along with his mana, but suddenly he remembered the notification that he got a few days ago. The rune of evolution is now connected with the shadow realm. Because of the connection between you, shadow realm and the rune of evolution, your mana is evolving into the world essence. Is my mana finally evolving into this so-called world essence? Evan asked himself not understanding why it started evolving now. There was no change in his mana for the past few days. It was only after entering the dungeon that his mana started changing. Evan looked at the dungeon portal and furrowed his eyebrow. Is my mana started changing because of entering a dungeon? Evan thought, but he did not get much time to think about it, because he felt the guards of the dungeon coming towards him. He took one last look at the portal before he started walking away from there. The guards came there because of the energy fluctuations that they felt when Evan was teleported out of the dungeon. After seeing it was Evan who came out of the dungeon, the guards relaxed. Evan nodded at the guards when he saw them and immediately left from there. He first called Sebastian and went to the Silver Star Guild building. Just as he agreed before going inside the dungeon, Evan brought out 30 bodies of the A-rank wyverns from there. Even though Evan already told him, Sebastian was still stunned when he saw 30 bodies of the A-rank wyverns. How many floors did you clear? Sebastian asked after seeing the bodies of 30 A-rank wyverns. 3. Evan answered casually. But Sebastiano was still shocked that Evan cleared three floors of an A-rank dungeon in less than two days. Evan did not care about Sebastian's stunned look, and left from there after dumping the bodies. After leaving there, Evan went back to the academy. Before going inside the dungeon, he was hunting in the wilderness for the past ten days. Just after coming out of the wilderness, he went inside the dungeon because he wanted to increase the rank of his prime core. Inside the dungeon, he was killing the wyverns non-stop because of his limited time. Even though he did not feel anything before, now that he was back in his room, he was feeling extremely tired. After coming back to his room, Evan went into the bathroom to clean himself. After taking a relaxing bath he changed his clothes, and without doing anything slumped down on his bed. In just one minute after he slumped down, the sound of snoring could be heard inside the room. Chapter 392 The next day, while having breakfast, Evan was looking at the message he had received the previous night. After reading the message, he put away his phone and continued to eat his breakfast. In the message, there were details about the students of a straight academy, 
who will participate in the tournament with him. There will be five students who will go to the central city to participate in the tournament. Other than Valerie and him, the other three were Gloria, Amy and Jackson. Evan knew all three of them because they fought against him during the practical exam. He even eliminated Amy and Jackson at that time. Seeing the names of his teammates, he didn't care too much about them. After eating breakfast he sat down on his bed. I still have one hour. Evan muttered seeing the time. In the message he received it was mentioned that they will leave for the airport at 9 o'clock. It was still 8 in the morning. So Evan decided to take a look at the skills of his shadow undeads. He used growth link skill and looked at Elijah's skills. I wonder if she got any new skill. Evan said, and Elijah's skills appeared before him. Evan ignored her previous skills and looked if she received any new skills after reaching a rank. And to his surprise, he saw she received three new skills after reaching a rank. Prismatic Mirage. Create illusory duplicates of yourself using light manipulation, confusing enemies, and allowing you to evade attacks. The number of duplicates you can create depends on your rank. Radiant Infusion. Enhance weapons or objects with light energy, making them more powerful and able to burn through obstacles. Lightfall Cataclysm. Unique skill. Channel immense light energy into the sky, causing a rain of searing light beams to descend upon the battlefield, leaving a trail of destruction. Evan was shocked when he saw Elijah receive three new skills after reaching a rank. He thought about how he didn't get any skill after reaching a rank, and felt his heart was pierced by a needle. All three of these skills are quite good. Evan muttered after seeing the details of Elijah's new skills. He was especially interested in Radiant Infusion. If I took this skill, I will be able to enhance the effect of my gauntlets and other artifacts. Even though he liked the skill, Evan did not take it right away. After Elijah, he looked at Aqua's skills. Just like before, he ignored its previous skills and searched for new skills. And he was surprised once again when he saw Aqua also receive two new skills. Mist Shroud Eruption unleashes a sudden burst of dense mist that can conceal your movements. Within the mist, the senses of your enemies weaken greatly. I think you should take a look at. See Dragon's ROAR unique skill. A formidable water element skill that summons the fury of a sea dragon's roar, unleashing a devastating combination of water and sound attack upon foes. Upon release, the roar takes the form of a colossal water dragon that rushes forward, sweeping away anything in its path. The roar itself is a combination of a deafening sonic assault and a deluge of water causing disorientation, physical harm, and emotional distress to enemies. The power of the roar can be harnessed to target specific foes, or create widespread devastation across a large area. Both of these skills are also great. Evan muttered after reading the details of Aqua's new skills. He looked at Necro's skills as well, and saw it got only one new skill. But that new skill was something that made him drool. He didn't even read its details because just from its name, he could guess what it was. Size Manipulation Evan muttered, tempted to take this skill immediately. When he read the details of the skill, he saw he can increase the size of his body 20 times, with the help of this skill. The power of this skill will also increase along with the rank of the user. Currently Necros is 10 meters tall. If it uses this skill, it can become a 200 meters tall giant. Evan gulped down his saliva, thinking how powerful Necros would become if it turns into a 200 meters tall giant. Evan looked at the skills of Cockatrice as well and saw the skills that it used against him. Petrifying Gaze. Your gaze can turn living beings to stone. If I was weaker than it, I might have really turned into a stone. Evan muttered when he saw the petrifying gaze skill. He continued to look at the skills of his shadow undeads, and soon an hour passed. He checked the skills of most of his shadow undeads, and even found a good skill that he took using the growth link skill. After taking the skill, Evan left his room and went out of the academy. When he reached outside, he saw all the people who were going to Central City were already present there. Nathan was also present there since he was going with them as well. Evan also noticed Valerie and his other three teammates. But he was surprised when he saw a middle-aged man who had brown hair and black eyes. He was standing with Nathan and Edward who were going with them. The middle-aged man was Robert, the person from whom he learned his broken basic swordsmanship. I completely forget about him, Evan muttered to himself when he saw Robert. Looks like now that there are no new dungeon outbreaks, he decided to come back to Academy. 
A bus was already waiting for them outside of the academy. Evan was the last one to arrive so when he came, all of them boarded the bus. The airport was not far away from the academy, so it did not take them long to reach there. It will take us there days to reach the central city. Evan thought, looking at the airport, thinking about Sarah, who might be planning to do something during the tournament a smirk appeared on his face. He looked at his shadow where unknown to anyone 50A rank monsters were waiting. It will be interesting. Chapter 393 When Evan boarded the plane, he saw there were already a few people sitting inside it. Most of those people were hunters of the different guilds of Astart City. He even saw Sebastian who was sitting with Jeffrey. It was only after seeing Sebastian that he remembered that he had told him that he too will be going to Central City. The other hunters from different guilds must be going there to see if they can recruit a good hunter to their guild who will participate in the tournament. Evan thought when he saw so many hunters inside the plane, he found an empty seat and sat there. Even though he had plenty of sleep last night, he was planning to sleep once again, since he had nothing else to do. Just as he was about to close his eyes he felt someone sitting beside him. He looked at the person from the corner of his eyes, and was stunned for a moment. Why is this old stalker sitting here? Evan thought when he saw Nathan sitting beside him. Nathan did not say anything after sitting down and closed his eyes. Evan found it odd that Nathan was sitting with him instead of Edward, Sebastian, or the other hunters. But seeing Nathan close his eyes, he didn't think too much about it. Soon the plane took off. Because of how comfortable the seat of the plane was, Evan soon fall asleep. After Evan fall asleep, Nathan opened his eyes and glanced at him before closing them once again. One day later the plane was still flying towards the central city, and Evan was taking full advantage of the comfortable seat. During the last 24 hours he did nothing except eat and sleep. Even the other hunters were speechless and were looking at him strangely. When they saw he closed his eyes once again after eating. Evan on the other hand, didn't give a shit about what other hunters were thinking, and was actually feeling regretful that there were no games in the plane. If there were some games here, I could have enjoyed the life of an attacky once again. Shriek shriek. Suddenly, some powerful shrieks rang out, and Evan felt the auras of 3A rank monsters. He barely opened one of his eyes and looked out the window of the plane. From the window, he saw three light blue colored birds which were 10 meters long, and their wings spread about 20 meters. All three of them were attacking the barrier of the plane, but other than making some small ripples on it, they were unable to do anything else to it. Seeing the three A rank monsters Evan yawned and closed his eyes once again. This was not the first time he had seen monsters flying so close to the plane. This happened several times during the last 24 hours. But the barrier of the plane is quite strong, and can easily handle the attacks of A rank monsters. Other hunters were also unconcerned about the three monsters and ignored them. Why don't you go out and drive them away? Evan who just closed his eyes, suddenly heard a voice inside his head. He opened his eyes and looked at Nathan, who was still sitting with his eyes closed. Is he using telepathy skill? Evan thought when he heard Nathan's voice inside his head. Wah. Evan wanted to ask him what does he mean, but before he could speak, Nathan's voice once again sounded inside his head. I think you should take a look at. Don't speak and just do what I am saying. Evan felt it was strange that Nathan was using telepathy skill to talk to him. Is he using it because he doesn't want others to listen to our conversations? Suddenly Evan remembered something, and he took out an earring from his storage ring. Whispering earring, B rank dash. These delicate silver earrings possess the ability to amplify the wearer's hearing. When worn, the earrings enhance the user's auditory senses, allowing them to hear even the faintest of sounds. Additionally, it grants its wearer telepathy skill. He wore the whispering earring and used telepathy skill as well. Why should I drive them away? The barrier can easily handle their attacks and they will soon go away on their own. Nathan was surprised for a moment when Evan used telepathy skill as well, but he soon recovered and replied to him, Just do as I say and be careful while going on top of the plane. Nathan did not explain anything to him and said, Evan raised an eyebrow when he heard Nathan's warning. He looked at the back end of the plane. At the back end of the plane, there was a slider on the plane's roof that people can use to go to the top of the plane. Why is he asking me to be careful while going outside? I can easily go there using the slider, right? Evan thought because many hunters in the previous 24 hours had used the slider to get to the top of the plane, 
When they were bored, seeing Evan's doubtful look, Nathan said to him once again, You will soon understand why I am saying this to you. For now, just go to the top of the plane. Evan took a deep look at Nathan and felt there must be a reason why he is asking him to go to the top of the plane. Well, it's not like I'll lose anything by listening to him. Evan thought to himself and stood up. He started to walk towards the back end of the plane where the slider was located. People who were present on the plane were actually shocked when they saw Evan standing up and going towards the slider. He is not going back to sleep after eating this time. A man said in a low voice. Maybe he's going to sleep on the roof of the plane because he's bored of sleeping here. The parson sitting beside him said. Although they were speaking quietly, Evan was clearly able to hear them because he was wearing whispering earring. He was a little embarrassed when he heard what people were talking about him. But all of his senses were on high alert because of what Nathan said to him. Soon he reached the back end of the plane, but nothing happened. Evan used the stairs to reach the slider and opened it. Just as he opened the slider and brought half of his body outside of the plane, he felt he was hit by a strange energy. You have been hit by the infibbling curse. Suddenly a notification flashed in front of him, which made his eyes open wide in shock. Chapter 394 You have been hit by the infibbling curse. The curse can't affect you because of your title. The ruler of the Shadow Realm. Evan was shocked when he saw the notifications in front of him. Although he was shocked, he didn't stop moving and came to the top of the plane using the slider. Because of the plane's barrier, he wasn't hit by the fierce wind upon coming to the top of the plane. Did Nathan ask me to come here because of this? Evan thought to himself while looking at the notification in front of him. He knew about the enfeebling curse because Oli has it too. Enfeebling curse. This curse gradually reduces the target's magical and physical abilities, making it increasingly difficult for them to cast spells or use their unique skills. Evan never asked Oli to use this curse on any monster, because this curse affects the target very slowly. He usually kills his target very quickly, so he never got a chance to see the effect of this curse. Is there someone inside the plane who is targeting me and Nathan knew about it? Which is why he asked me to come here. Evan thought while arching his eyebrows. Shriek. Shrike. Suddenly the shrieks of three monsters became louder. Evan looked at them and saw they were attacking the barrier even more fiercely after seeing him. Evan's eyes flashed with coldness. He was irritated that someone is targeting him. And he doesn't even know who is that person. He did not use any kind of flashy skills to take care of the three monsters because he did not want to reveal he is already an A-rank hunter to anyone. Because of his skill shadow shrouding wings, he is hiding his true aura, and was showing the aura of a B-plus rank hunter all this time. Shadow shrouding wings. Ash create two wings of shadow using mana. The more mana you use on the wings, the faster you will be able to fly. The wings also have a great defense, and can be used as a shield to weaken or stop an attack. This skill has a shrouding effect on your aura using this. You can hide or control your aura as you wish. Now that he knew that someone is targeting him, he found it even more necessary to hide his current rank so that he can catch that person off guard. The speed of the plane was quite fast and the three monsters were barely keeping up with it. Evan looked at them and used his mind suppression skill. After his prime core advanced to a rank his spiritual power increased even more. So just as he used mind suppression on three monsters, they felt a splitting headache. Shriek. All three of them shrieked out in pain and lost their balance in mid-air. The plane kept moving forward and made a considerable distance from the monsters in just a few seconds. I think you should take a look at. After a few seconds, the three monsters recovered and tried to chase the plane but could not catch it due to its high speed. Evan looked at the three monsters who were chasing after the plane, but did not care too much about them. He looked back at the slider, and after taking a deep breath went inside the plane. His expressions were normal when he went inside, and he acted like he doesn't know he was hit by enfeebling curse. Normally people do not detect that they have been affected by the curse, as the notification window does not show anything about it. Evan was only able to see the notification due to the second effect of his title Ruler of the Shadow Realm, which activated after he was hit by the curse. After coming back, Evan quietly went back to his seat and sat down. Did something strange happen? Just as he sat down, he heard Nathan's voice. Evan was silent for a moment before he replied to him. I was hit by enfeebling curse. Nathan kept his eyes closed after hearing Evan. 
What is going on here? Evan asked him when he saw Nathan did not show any kind of reaction even after hearing him. Yesterday I felt the energy of a curse as soon as I entered the plane. The energy was directed towards you. That is why I sat beside you to see if I could detect it. But the energy disappeared after I sat down beside you. Nathan started to speak. When even after 24 hours I did not feel the energy of the curse again. I thought that the person who is trying to use it is hesitating because of me. That's why I asked you to go out of the plane. A frown appeared on Nathan's face after speaking to this point. I was scanning the plane when you were leaving, but I still couldn't feel the energy of the curse. It seems that the person who cast the curse used something to hide its energy this time. I was thinking of catching him the moment he would try to use it on you. But it seems my plan failed. Evan looked around the plane after hearing Nathan. There were more than 30 people inside the plane. So it was impossible for him to accurately guess the identity of the person who used the curse on him. By the way, since you could tell you were hit by a curse, I am guessing you have something that protects you from curses. Nathan said once again and without waiting for his reply he continued to speak. That person used the enfibbling curse on you, which means he wants to weaken you slowly. The enfibbling curse normally takes effect in 4 or 5 days. So you should wait for a few days, and the person who used that curse on you, might appear before you on his own. Evan thought about what Nathan said and nodded his head. He closed his eyes once again, but this time instead of sleeping he was thinking about the person who used the curse on him. Is the person who used the curse from the Dark Guild? Or is there someone other than the Dark Guild that's targeting me? Evan thought to himself, let's hope the person who is targeting me will appear in front of me soon so that I can stop thinking about him. The next two days pass without much happening, and Evan and the others finally reach the central city. Chapter 395 The plane landed at the airport in the central city, and everyone stood up to leave the plane. Yes, all except one. Nathan looked beside him, and his old mouth can't help but twitch. Wake up, he shouted inside Evan. S mind using telepathy skill and started to walk away from there. Evan slowly opened his eyes and looked at Nathan's departing back. He heaved a sigh of disappointment and stood up. He had been pretending to be asleep most of the time during the last two days, to see whether the person who had used the curse on him would make an effort to do something. Unfortunately, nothing happened in the past two days. Well, looks like I can just wait for him to show himself in front of me, Evan muttered to himself, and followed after the other people. Why did you sit with the principal? If you had sat with us, we could have made a good strategy for the tournament. Just as he exited the plane, he heard Valerie's voice. Evan rolled his eyes after hearing her because he knew she was also sleeping like a log for the past three days. She came back from the dungeon the day before they left for the central city, and it was obvious she was tired after coming out from the dungeon. So she also did nothing but eat and sleep these three days. When Evan used his spiritual senses to look for the person who used the curse on him, he saw she was even drooling while sleeping. Moreover, we don't even know what kind of challenges we will face in the tournament, so what kind of strategy she wants to make. The challenges of the tournament will be different each year, so people could only guess what will happen during the tournament. But Evan was too lazy to argue with her, so he just pointed towards the old stalker. I didn't sit with him intentionally. He was the one who came and sat beside me, and it's not like I could ask him to sit somewhere else after all. He is an S-rank hunter who can crush me with just a single finger. You could have just changed your seat. It is not like the principal was holding you, there Valerie said in a doubtful voice. Are you kidding? What if the principal get offended that I changed my seat as soon as he sat down? I can't afford to offend an omnipotent figure like him. Cough asterisk c-o-u-g-h asterisk. Sebastian, who was walking in front, suddenly coughed out the water he was drinking. Are you fine? Jeffrey, who was beside him, asked. I am fine, Sebastian said while wiping his mouth. This bastard's ability to talk bullshit is on S rank. He was hearing Evan's conversation because he still remembered how Evan said he wanted his daughter. He was just hearing their conversation to keep an eye on Evan, but he was caught off guard because of the bullshit that Evan was speaking. If he is afraid of S ranker so much he would not have acted so casually in front of me. Sebastian thought to himself. 
Why do I feel like you stole that line from a cliché novel Valerie said when she heard what Evan said. Evan was startled when he heard her because he really stole that line from a novel he read in his past life. I didn't expect this brain-dead woman to successfully guess I stole that line. Evan thought to himself and kept his mouth shut. I think you should take a look at. Soon they came out of the airport. A bus was already waiting for them outside. This bus will take them to the hotel which is reserved for the people who came to participate in the tournament. Evan went inside the bus and looked at the hunters of the different guilds who came with them. They were not going with them since they were not the participants in the tournament. The person who used Infibbling Curse on me must be among them. Evan thought as he sat down. This time he sat down with Valerie and others. As the bus started to move, Valerie, Amy and others started to talk. They were planning to roam around the city. Since there was still two days before the start of the tournament, Evan was planning to do the same. But for some reason, he doesn't want to visit the city with other people. He doesn't know why, but he noticed that he doesn't like to stay with people after killing Olivia. It was like something inside him is telling him to stay away from other people. So when Valerie asked him if he wants to come with them, he rejected them by saying he still wants to sleep. Jackson and others were speechless when they heard he still wanted to sleep but didn't comment on it. The hotel where they were staying was not far away from the airport, so they reached there in less than one hour. I wonder if the students of other academies are here as well. Evan thought remembering about Mark and others who were his teammates during the monster tide of Nathlium City. Edward led them inside the hotel, and after confirming their identities, all of them received their room keys. Edward also asked the receptionist if the people from the other academies arrived or not. But according to the receptionist, they were the first ones to arrive. After receiving their keys, Edward told Valerie and the others to do whatever they want, as they had nothing to do for the next two days. Are you sure you don't want to come? Valerie asked Evan again, seeing he was going towards the elevator. You guys can go ahead. I still want to sleep, Evan said without turning back and entered the elevator. I've never seen such a lazy person in my entire life, Gloria said upon hearing Evan's response. With the help of the elevator, Evan reached the fifth floor of the hotel where his room was. He used the key he got to go inside the room. The room was very luxurious. And if it was in the past, he would definitely think of stealing something from the room. But now that he has enough money, he did not think of anything like that. After coming inside the room he waited for about 10 minutes. And used his spiritual senses. After confirming that Valerie and the others left, he walked towards the room's window and left his hotel room using shadow wings. He landed some distance away from the hotel and started to walk away from there. Unknown to him, as he was walking away, a pair of deep purple eyes was looking at him from the roof of the hotel. Chapter 396 Clank With a rattling sound, a heavy wooden door swung open, and a man wearing a butler dress walked into a dimly lit, grand-looking study room, bathed in the warm glow of vintage chandeliers. As the man walked forward, his polished leather shoes glided across the plush Persian rug that adorned the floor. The room exuded an air of sophistication, with mahogany bookshelves lining the walls, showcasing leather-bound books and antiques. In the middle of the room, sat a woman who looks to be in her mid-twenties. She had long silver hair that cascaded gracefully over the back of an antique armchair. A porcelain teacup, adorned with intricate floral patterns, was cradled in her hand. Rising tendrils of steam wafted from the cup, carrying the soothing aroma of chamomile tea, that mingled with the faint scent of different herbs. Her green eyes were fixed on the open book before her as she read it, while sipping her tea from time to time. As the man wearing the butler uniform saw the woman, a loud sigh escaped from his mouth. How long do I have to act as your butler? The man said in a slightly irritated voice. And his aura of an A-plus rank hunter spill out for a moment, making the bookshelves present in the room tremble a bit. Just a few more days, said Sarah without taking her eyes off the book. You lost the bet with me, so it is natural now you have to help me. T.S.K. The man clicked his tongue in annoyance and sat down on a chair. The student you asked me to keep an eye on is here. The man said while pouring himself a cup of tea from the kettle. Sarah's green eyes flashed and she finally looked at the man. The man had short black hair, purple eyes, and plump lips. That looked as if they were swollen. If he is here then just do what I told you before. 
I still think it is a waste to send so many of them against him. I have just seen him and he is just a B-plus rank hunter. Do you really want to send so many of them to take care of him? The man said, gulping down a whole cup of tea in one go. I'm not sending them to take care of him. If I wanted to take care of him instead of them, I would have sent you, Sarah said, putting down the teacup in her hand. Amara asked me to test them. And he's the right person to test the potential of these things. I am more or less certain about the power of other people. But for some reason, I can't cause his power. No matter how much information I try to collect about him. By sending them, I will be able to test the potential of these things. And at the same time, I will know just how much that guy is hiding. The man was still drinking the tea like water. And already emptied more than half of the kettle. He gulped down another cup of tea and looked at Sarah. I think you are being too serious, because he was able to escape from that stupid Layla. Even though he was hiding his rank at that time and was at B rank, I still can't believe she couldn't catch him despite being an A rank hunter. Sarah didn't show any emotion after hearing him and looked at him calmly. Do you seriously want to do this? He asked after seeing Sarah's calm look. You know, I can just go there and easily catch him for you why though? You don't have to do this. Sarah interrupted him midway. I am not here just for him. There are many people that I want to capture. So just do what I'm saying. I think you should take a look at. The man wanted to say something. But seeing Sarah's firm look, he clicked his tongue once again and nodded his head. By the way, why are you in your original appearance? What if someone else saw your real appearance? The man suddenly asked looking at her curiously. Currently there is no one here. So you don't need to worry about that Sarah said and once again picked up the book she was reading earlier. Just go ahead and do what I told you. The man stood up and started to walk away from the room. Wait, just as the man was about to exit the room, Sarah suddenly stopped him. The man turned around and looked at her with questioning eyes. Sarah looked inside her storage ring and took out a black orb, which was 10 centimeters in diameter. She threw the orb towards the man who caught it. After catching the orb when he looked at it, he saw the orb was looking like an eye. You know what to do with it, right? Sarah asked him with a smile on her face. Can't you just come with me and see everything with your own eyes? The man asked with his mouth twitching. If I still have to go there on my own, then what is the point of bringing you here? Sarah said and stopped looking at him. The man took a deep breath to not curse out loud and put away the orb into his storage ring. He once again turned around ready to leave. But just as he was about to exit the room. Wait. Sarah once again stopped him. Black lines appeared on the man's forehead. And he looked at her while gritting his teeth. From his face. It was obvious that he wanted to beat the shit out of her. What now? But the man could do nothing since he knew if he tried to fight her. He will just get his ass kicked by her. Look at the fight from the distance and don't expose yourself. Sarah ignored his irritated look and said in a serious voice. Seeing the serious look on her face, the man nodded his head and finally left the room. Sarah looked at the closer door for a moment before shaking her head and focusing back on the book in her hands. Chapter 397 Evan was sitting in a park looking at the 2000 meter high building in front of him. He was eating ice cream and had a relaxed expression on his face. The main headquarters of the Hunter Association is really impressive, muttered Evan, looking at the building. I read that the current president of the Hunter Association is the strongest hunter in the world. I wonder if she is inside this building. According to what Evan knew, the current president of the Hunters Association is an old woman named Natasha. Although there was not much information available on the internet about her skills or power, he saw a video in which she killed an s rank monster in less than a minute. That was trying to enter the central city. From the video, it looks like her skills are related to space element Evan muttered remembering the video. I think Nathan is also quite strong. In one on one fight, it would be difficult for me to beat him without using shadow energy. From what Evan could feel after talking with Nathan and Sebastian, he felt that Sebastian is a little weaker than Nathan. Although the difference is not big, he was sure that Nathan is more powerful than him. Well, considering Sebastian is quite young when compared to Nathan, I think it is natural that he is weaker than him. Evan finished his ice cream and stood up from the bench he was sitting on. He stretched his body and looked at the night sky filled with stars. 
without realizing I spent more than 5 hours doing nothing and just trying different kinds of food that are quite famous in the central city. Evan rubbed the back of his head and decided to go back to the hotel. After killing Olivia and Adam, he got many calls from them, and he wanted to absorb them using his monarch core to increase his power even more. He also had calls that he collected from the wilderness and the wyvern nest dungeon. He wanted to absorb them after he came out of the dungeon, but he did not find time for that. It is going to be a pain in the ass to increase the rank of my monarch core to A, Evan said in a bitter tone, remembering how little progress his monarch core made when he absorbed the energies of some monsters using energy devouring skill and fed it. While walking he looked at the mana inside his core and noticed a very small amount of his mana turned into a rainbow colored energy. My mana stopped changing once again. His mana continued to change into world essence for one day after he left the dungeon. But after a day it stopped changing again for some reason. Do I need to go inside a dungeon to continue to change it into world essence? Evan thought to himself remembering his mana started to change after his dungeon exploration. Forget it. I will think about it after going back to a start city Evan said and stopped looking at the mana inside his core. As Evan was walking towards the exit, he saw an old couple who just entered the park. They were not hunters and were looking to be in their late 60s. Surprisingly, he noticed they were coming towards him and were smiling for some reason. Why are they coming towards me? Evan frowned when he saw them smiling at him. The couple stopped in front of him, and the old woman said to him with a kind smile on her face, Your friend asked us to give this letter to you. Evan looked at the letter in the woman's hand, and was dumbfounded when he saw a big pink heart engraved at the top of it. Is this a love letter? Evan was perplexed and did not know what to say. Seeing the perplexed look on Evan's face the couple laughed and the woman placed the letter in his hand. I think you should take a look at. Evan came out of his perplexed state only when the old woman placed the letter in his hand. He looked at her and saw she was smiling kindly at him. Um auntie, can you tell me where is this friend of mine who asked you to give me this letter? Evan asked, trying to guess the identity of the person who asked them to give this letter to him. She was outside of the park a moment ago, but she ran away after asking us to give this letter to you. The old man said and grabbed the hand of the old woman. Let's go honey. Looks like this young one is finally going to experience the spring. The man said and the old couple left from there. Evan. He was completely speeches when he heard what the old man said. He looked at the letter in his hands but did not find anything strange with it. Who the hell is this person who sent me this letter? Evan muttered with a frown on his face because he arrived in the central city just a few hours ago, and he doesn't know anyone here. He hesitated just for a moment before deciding to open it. Unlike other people who open these kinds of letters with care, Evan mercilessly tore it open in one go. As he opened the letter, instead of some love-filled words, he saw a silver-colored paper with a strange rune engraved on it. Suddenly the rune on silver paper lit up. Before he could throw away the letter, his body was surrounded by a silver light. Seeing the silver light covering his body, only one thought came into Evan's mind. This is fucking love letter trap. Whoosh. The silver light spread in the surroundings and soon disappeared along with Evan. Evan's vision turned blurry, and he felt the sensation of being teleported away. His vision returned to normal in less than two seconds. But before he could see where he was, he felt tens of attacks coming towards him. He had no time to use any kind of skills because of the sudden attack. But luckily he was wearing his shielding amulet earring. Just as the attacks were about to hit him, his earring lit up and a barrier covered him stopping the attacks. Crack dot dot crack. Because of so many attacks, cracks started to appear on the barrier. But before the barrier shattered, it successfully stopped all the attacks. After the barrier stopped all the attacks, Evan quickly looked around him. He felt the aura of 30 hunters around him, and saw he seemed to be inside a rundown building. Among 30 hunters, 3 were B plus rank, 7 were B rank, and 20 were C and C plus rank. Suddenly Evan saw a B rank blue head hunter charging toward him. He was already pissed off because of the sudden ambush. So without waiting for him to come near him, Evan instantly appeared before the charging hunter and kicked him right at his chest. The sound of bones cracking rang out, and the B-rank hunter was sent flying backwards like a broken kite. He crashed against the wall of the building, and coughed out a mouthful of blood. But Evan can't help but frown when he saw what happened next. Chapter 398 
Evan looked at the blue-haired hunter with a deep frown on his face. The ribs of the man were broken because of his earlier kick, and he could see blood seeping out from his mouth. But even after receiving such a severe injury, the blue-haired man instantly stood up without showing any kind of emotion. It was like the man cannot feel the pain even though his ribs were broken. But Evan didn't get much time to think about it, because he once again saw tens of different kinds of attacks coming towards him from all directions. The power of attacks was not strong. Some attacks were at B plus rank, some were at B rank, and most of the attacks were at C and C plus rank. If he was outside, he could have easily dodged all of them, but inside the closed space of the building, it was almost impossible for him to do that. He spread his shadow wings covering his back, left and right side with them. The wind spun around his fists, and in less than one second he punched five times in front of him. Boom. Five wing cannons shot forward and collided against the attacks coming in front of him. At the same time the attacks from the other three sides clashed against his shadow wings. Boom dash. Boom dash. The sound of explosions filled the surroundings as the entire building he was in started to shake. Evan staggered a bit because of so many attacks, but his shadow shrouding wings successfully stopped all the attacks. Evan's shadow flickered a bit, and the wind fury sword shot out from it. He caught the sword in mid-air and turned into a gust of wind, charging towards the person who was closest to him. The person was just a C-rank hunter, so even before it could react, red blood spurted out, and one of his arms was severed by Evan. Evan could have killed the man by beheading him, but he wanted to confirm something first, and after cutting the hand of the person he was now certain, these people can't feel pain. He thought as he saw the person who just lost his arm backing away without showing any emotion on his face. All of these people were like puppets who were just acting according to the order they received. Seeing these strange people, Evan immediately understood this is definitely the work of the Dark Guild. Only those assholes can do such a thing. Evan thought, remembering the strange potion that Olivia used. Do they think these small fries can harm me? If he was just a normal B plus rank hunter, he would have definitely been beaten to death by these people, but with his current powers, he wasn't worried about these 30 hunters. Evan's eyes flashed with green light as a large amount of mana burst forth from his body. Wind blades filled the entire floor of the building, and a sharp aura engulfed the surroundings. There were hundreds of wind blades, and Evan shot them in all directions without caring about anything. Even though he did not use his full power, the wind blades were still more powerful than normal B plus rank attacks. Seeing the sharp wind blades, the 30 hunters present inside the building used all kinds of skills. Only three B plus rank hunters were barely able to stop the wind blades coming toward them. The rest of the hunters were too weak to stop the wind blades. Among the 20 C and C plus rank hunters who were hit by wind blades, 10 hunters instantly died, and the other 10 were seriously injured. The 7 B rank hunters were not dead, but they were also seriously injured. Only B plus rank hunters remained unharmed after the attack of wind blades. Rumble. But this was not the end. There were hundreds of wind blades, and many of them clashed against the walls and the pillars of the building. The building was already very weak because of their earlier attacks. So when hundreds of wind blades collided against the pillars and walls, the result was quite obvious. I think you should take a look at. Crack. Crack. Cracks appeared all over the building, and it started to shake. But the remaining 20 hunters completely ignored the crumbling building and their injuries, and rushed towards him. Most of the C and C plus rank hunters were missing their arms or legs, but even then they rushed towards him like zombies. Evan can't help but look at these hunters in wonder not understanding just what the Hell Dark Guild did to them, so that they became like this. The B plus rank hunters were the first ones to arrive before him. They attacked him with their fists, but he easily dodged their attacks. His wind fury sword shined with green light, and the head of one of the three B plus rank hunters flew into the sky. After cutting the head of one of the hunters, he turned his body and kicked away the remaining two B plus rank hunters. Both of them were sent flying backwards because of the impact and crashed against the wall, destroying it. Before the re-aiming hunter could reach Evan, the roof of the building collapsed. A wind tornado and thunder shield appeared around Evan protecting him from the falling debris. Rumble. The pillars of the building were not able to handle the weight of the building any longer, and it finally collapsed. The remaining hunters still tried to attack Evan when the building was falling, but they were crushed under the falling building. 
A large dust cloud rose, and shockwaves spread in the surroundings, shaking the foundations of the other buildings present in the area. The thunder shield and the wind tornado protected Evan, so he was completely fine even though the building collapsed. On the other hand, the hunters who were just trying to kill him without caring about the collapsing building, were crushed under it. After the building collapsed, the tornado and the lightning shield covering Evan disappeared. He used wind manipulation to blow away the dust cloud. After blowing away the dust cloud he looked around him and saw all the hunters who were attacking him were buried under the building. Whoosh whoosh. But before Evan could relax, he felt some wild and powerful aura emanating from beneath the collapsed building. The rubbles of the collapsed building started to shake. Evan narrowed his eyes, and wind and lightning once again appeared around him. Bang. But suddenly a loud sound akin to gunfire reverted in the surrounding. C-O-U-G-H asterisk. Evan coughed out a mouthful of blood and slowly looked down. When he looked down, his eyes shook as he saw there was a see-through hole in his chest where his heart used to be. His heart completely disappeared, only a small rice grain sized black colored core was floating at the place where his heart used to be. Chapter 399 15 kilometers from the place where Evan was fighting, a person, whose face was covered with a black mask, lay on the top of a 300 meters high building. I don't know how you disappeared from that park, but you won't be able to escape from me. A man's voice sounded from behind the mask, and he took out a sniper rifle from his storage ring. The rifle was similar to Barrett M82, and was releasing the aura of an A-plus rank artifact. I can sense the mark that I left on him from this direction. The man muttered and aimed his rifle in Evan's direction. The scope present on the rifle suddenly lit up, and the man's vision started to expand. In less than three seconds his vision reached a far distance, and he was able to see Evan, who was standing amid a crumbling building. It was a good thing I left a mark on him when he was busy eating his ice cream earlier, or it would have been impossible for me to look for him, after he suddenly disappeared from there. The man muttered as he started to pour his mana into the rifle. The rifle absorbed all the mana that man poured into it, and a dark red bullet which was loaded inside the rifle, started to shine. Ten seconds later the rifle stopped absorbing mana, and a cruel smile appeared on the man's face. Let's complete this job and get my remaining payment. The man muttered and pulled the trigger. Bang dash. A loud booming sound reverted in tens of kilometers of the area as a dark red bullet shot out from the rifle. Sarah was looking at a holographic screen in front of her with her eyes wide open. There was only one question running through her mind. What the hell is going on here? She muttered, seeing how easily Evan had dealt with the 30 hunters she had sent. Just like the purple-eyed man, she also thought that sending 30 hunters to deal with him is simply an overkill. But she wanted to test those 30 hunters, and also wanted to know if Evan is still hiding his rank, so she still sent them. But looking at the demolished building and the buried hunters, she can't help but feel stunned. From the casual look on his face, I am sure he did not even use his full power while fighting against them. Sarah thought that those 30 hunters will definitely be able to make him reveal all of his abilities after all. There were 3B plus and 7B rank hunters among them. Even an A rank hunter will have to fight without holding back if he wanted to take care of them. But seeing how easily Evan dealt with them her mind was in complete chaos. She took out her communication crystal and called the purple-eyed man named Paul. Paul. What is his rank? She immediately asked after he answered her call. She can't feel Evan's aura because she was looking at him using the holographic screen. But Paul was seeing the fight live. He was just one kilometer away from the place where Evan was fighting, and was using a skill to hide his presence. So she wanted to know from him what is Evan's current rank. Paul didn't answer immediately after hearing her question, because he was also stunned after seeing what happened. I think you should take a look at but he soon recompensed himself and said while gritting his teeth, a rank. He was angry that Evan was able to fool him, even though he is an A-plus rank hunter. Sarah went silent after hearing him. After a moment she spoke once again. What about the timer for their transformation? Just as you told me, it is three minutes. Sarah's mouth can't help but twitch after hearing Paul. The hunters that she sent were not normal. All of them were special, and they could transform into humanoid monsters just like Carlos who was killed by Evan a few months ago. After transforming they would become far more powerful than normal hunters. But unlike Carlos, these hunters were like puppets who can't think properly. 
Sarah was afraid that if they transformed while fighting against Evan, he would be killed by them because of their increased power. Which is why she set a timer for their transformation. She thought they will be able to deal with Evan in less than three minutes. After three minutes they will transform into humanoid monsters, and will carry out her next order, which was to wreak havoc in the city. She wanted to see if they would remain indifferent to pain even after being transformed. If they start to wreak havoc, the guards of the city will come to stop them, and she would get her answer. Unfortunately, all of her plans were ruined because of Evan. Before they could transform, all of them were killed by Evan. Is any of them still alive? Sarah asked Paul. Most of them are dead, but I can feel five of them are still alive, Paul said, looking at the dust cloud in front of him. They should be transforming now. Suddenly Paul felt five wild auras coming out from under the debris. After hearing five hunters are still alive and they are about to transform, Sarah also looked at the holographic screen. Bang dash. But before those hunters could come out, both Sarah and Paul were startled when they suddenly heard a loud booming sound. Paul, what hap? Sarah wanted to ask what happened, but she stopped when she saw a large hole in Evan's chest. Paul who was standing one kilometer away from Evan was also stunned and looked in the opposite direction from where he heard the sound. But when he looked in that direction, he did not see anyone within 10 kilometers of area. Paul helped him suddenly he heard Sarah's anxious voice. I need him alive. Damn it. Paul stopped searching for the person who attacked Evan and was about to help him when he stopped in his tracks and his eyes opened wide. Chapter 400. Evan felt strength leaving his body as he looked at the hole in his chest. The hole was 5 centimeters in diameter and he could see his monarch core which was completely fine and still rotating at the same place even though his heart was destroyed. His vision started to turn blurry, and the shadow undeads inside his shadow storage were about to come out on their own, when they sensed his aura was fading. Stop Evan said in a barely audible voice, but all of his shadow undeads who were about to come out stopped. Suddenly a purple aura appeared around him. Death transfer. Before his conscience plunged into darkness he muttered, and the hole in his chest suddenly disappeared. Death transfer dash. Using death transfer you can transfer injuries, curses or diseases from yourself to your shadow undeads or vice versa. You can also transfer damage received from one shadow undead to another. You can use this skill once every two hours. Using his skill Evan transferred his injury to one of his shadow wyverns. As he can heal it using his mana, he wasn't worried about its injuries. After returning to perfect condition, Evan immediately flapped his wings and flew upwards. His eyes were filled with anger, and he wanted nothing more than to rip apart the person who sneakily attacked him. Boom dash. Just as he flew upward, the rubble and the debris of the collapsed building were blown away, and five wild aura spread in the surrounding. Soon five people who were looking like humanoid monsters came out from under the debris. Two humanoid monsters were looking like apes, and their bodies were covered in deep blue metallic looking furs, while the other three were looking like tiger and wolves. All five of them were the hunters who were fighting against him earlier. Among these five, two were B-plus rank hunters, while three were B-rank hunters. But currently, the auras of those hunters were far more powerful than before. Currently, the two B-plus rank hunters were releasing the aura of peak A rank hunter, while the B rank hunters were also very close to A rank. An O3R, Ash N. Evan just glanced at the five humanoid monsters for a moment before he looked in the direction from where he heard the earlier sound. Take care of them Eclipse. While looking in the direction from where he heard the sound of the gunshot, Evan gave an order to Eclipse, who came out of his shadow storage using stealth skill. Eclipse came out using stealth skill because it could feel that Evan doesn't want to reveal the existence of shadow undeads for now. Eclipse landed on the ground and looked at the humanoid monsters that emerged from under the debris of the building. They were about to move away to follow Sarah's order of wreaking havoc in the city, when Eclipse's purple eyes turned black. A small black sun came out of its body, and suddenly 300 meters area around it turned completely black, like it was covered by a black veil. Eclipsing Strike, Unique Skill. You can summon a temporary solar eclipse for 3 minutes, shrouding the area in darkness. During this time, you will gain immense power. Cool down time. 4 hours. Eclipse used its unique skill to cover the area around it in the darkness. That way no one will be able to detect its presence, even when it will attack humanoid monsters. 
Because of using Eclipsing Strike its power increased by leaps and bounds. Its size started to decrease, and its body was now just one meter tall. Although Eclipse becomes smaller, its aura was now very close to A plus rank. Evan completely ignored what Eclipse was doing, and used his Hawk's Eye skill to search for the person who attacked him. His pitch black eyes suddenly glowed with a rainbow light. As he used the small amount of world essence, he had to activate his skill. Like the skill was following his will, his vision expanded, and he saw a person laying at the top of a building 15 kilometers away from him. The person was still aiming towards him using something that was looking like a gun. I think you should take a look at. Found you M O T H E R F U C asterisko. Evan said in a murderous voice as his Blazerbringer gauntlets appeared in his hands. The man was stunned when he saw how Evan recovered, but he recomposed himself and prepared to fire another shot. But suddenly he saw Evan floating in mid-air and looking in his direction. Even though he was very far away from him, the man felt all hairs on his body stand up to no end. He saw Evan's eyes shining with rainbow light, and he muttered something looking in his direction. The next second his protective artifact activated on its own, and Evan who was 15 kilometers away from him instantly appeared before him. Step of Voyager. When the wearer activates this skill, they gain the ability to step into the void, and traverse vast distances in mere seconds, teleporting from one point to another. The maximum distance you can travel using this skill is 100 kilometers, and this skill can be used two times a day. Evan used the skill of his boots of Voyager to instantly appear before the man. He was so angry that even the passive skill of his gauntlets activated. Inferno Aura Passive Skill When the user is enraged or in a heightened emotional state, Blazerbringer gauntlets emit a blazing aura, enhancing their attacks and making them even more formidable. His gauntlets burned with flames, and Evan punched at the protective barrier of the man without holding back. Boom Dash a wave of fire engulfed the barrier and the building the man was standing on shook. But Evan was shocked when he saw the barrier just rippled a bit, and was completely fine even after his attack. He was sure that with his current power, he can even break an A-plus rank barrier without any problem. You dog of the Dark Guild. Evan did not ask the person who he is or why he attacked him, because he assumed the person in front of him was also someone from the Dark Guild, just like the people who attacked him earlier. The heart of the man who was inside the barrier was beating like a war drum, because of the sudden turn of events. For a moment when Evan suddenly appeared in front of him, he thought he is going to die. Luckily I have this S rank protective artifact or... The man thought and his body shudder. Without saying anything to Evan, the man took out an escape scroll from his storage ring. Seeing the scroll in the man's hand Evan's expression changed. Do you think I will let you escape from here? Evan shouted and his eyes turned black. Suddenly a strange aura started to come out of Evan's body. Roar dash. The next second a powerful dragon roar reverted in the tens of kilometers of area. And a dreadful feeling engulfed the man who was inside the barrier. This is the end of this video. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you enjoyed and wish you wonderful rest of the day. The silent rupt is out.